Midnight Ocean with Jeff Norton on the Paranormal State Radio Network. That is right, Andrew. <laughs> this is the Midnight Ocean Radio Show and a podcast. I am your host, Jeff Norton. I have a little bit of technical difficulties there. We'll get them worked out, though. <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard the double feed. That was kind of crazy. We got a great show lined up for you tonight. We are here in the heart of the great state of Florida, the Sunshine State. Not so sunny today. That's right. We are under a hurricane warning as Hurricane Matthew makes landfall on the East Coast. Now, we're actually on the West Coast, so we got caught up in Hermes last month. But uh, we do have family members who are being affected by the storm on the East Coast. So our prayers and thoughts go out to them that they make it through. Make it through. There's mandatory orders. Get out. You know, to me, you just don't screw with Mother Nature. When, you know, when the experts are telling you to get out, get out. It ain't like they're going to loot your house. Well, maybe someone else will. But uh, they are telling everybody to get out. And uh, we do have some family members who are staying with us. We made some room here at the Norton household. Good to see them. It's almost like Thanksgiving all over again. <laughs> so, uh, but like I said, our, you know, our prayers go out. I'm, I'm glad to see our family, our family members. But I would like to see them under different circumstances. But uh, hopefully everything will go okay and uh matthews it looks like as i'm watching the weather here it seems to be kind of still going out towards the ocean not making landfall as predicted so let's keep our fingers crossed there and hopefully uh, things will go well for everybody wow what a show last night i thoroughly enjoyed it and had some repercussions from it though I was put on a 48-hour ban from posting. Apparently, I don't know. Apparently, someone did a really good job at post. I, but I don't know why I got banned. <laughs> but, uh, apparently, it, 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 you know, Facebook. It, the irony of it all. I'll probably get in trouble for talking about it. I'm going to get banned for talking about the ban. But Facebook banned me for not following hosting process or some some term of service. They don't really tell you why. They just tell you you're, you're, you're in a ban. You can appeal it, but you don't know what you're appealing because we didn't follow some posting guideline. I, I have no idea. I have no idea, so we can't post anything. So I do apologize for those who got late notice about the show tonight. But we're not allowed to post on any page, our show. I think it has something to do with the fact that I was probably telling people to stop using Facebook Live. Right? I was telling them to go to YouTube and everything. So let me um, knock this down here. Get a lot of tweets. A lot of people are interested, worried that we are okay. But like I said earlier, we have a great show lined up for you tonight. We we actually have a very special guest staying with our UFO theme and also trying to help a really great guy. We have Manu Inarami is going to be joining us here in a few as we dial him up and get him queued up into the system. I I'm actually impressed. I, I can I, I can pronounce his name. So, for those that don't know, Manu Manu is a combination of the Incan god of law, and Interami is the Incan god of sun. But that's not what you guys know him from. You guys probably know him from his Star Trek days. And without further ado, I'm not going to go into a big long introduction of Manu. Those that listen to the show know who he is because we've had him on before and uh, joining us all the way from the great state of California. Manu, how are you, buddy? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Man? Oh, man, we're getting blown away out here. Oh, no. <laughs> I want to go fly a kite. I, that. 
I shouldn't I'm do a, that. I, I shouldn't make jokes. This is not a time to be joking, I guess. No. Uh, <laughs> how are you, though? I mean, no. where, where are you exactly? Well, we're, you know, I want to tell you, last time I had you on, it was the night before the Hurricane Hermes hit us. Oh, <laughs> and so I have you on tonight and we're getting hit by the but we're on the we're on the west coast. So we're we're actually on the Gulf side and uh we're worried what we're waiting for is it for it to loop back around and come back through Florida and up through the Gulf. That's what they're saying is probably going to happen if it doesn't make landfall. And uh but our family all of our relatives we we actually have um my father-in-law, mother-in-law and, and sister-in-law and her boyfriend and and every they're all here at the house now. We got everybody crammed into the house because they 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 live in Daytona and Ormond yeah. Beach, literally right. They're about a block off of the uh, off of the off of the uh, ocean there. So the whole coast of Florida is basically uh, gone farther inland at this point. Yeah, yeah. We had over. They said over two million people have evacuated. Smart move. You know, it's it's just. I, I watched the videos of the Category Four hurricane. Now, I'll tell you, I lived through the Category One. Obviously, I'm talking to you with Hermes. I, yeah. I'm not going to do the Category One again. And I watched the videos on the Category Four. You're insane if you think you're going to, you know, sur- sit there on the coast and survive that. I mean, there we're talking. It just blows home, houses over. Yeah. Ah. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, I, wow. Yeah, I'm gonna watch some of those videos now. I don't think I've ever seen a Category Four uh, video. How do they even get video of that? Well, be, yeah. Well, the people are there, but like I said, yeah. it, it. I mean, the storm surge is going to be something like 14 to 20 feet. Well, the storm surge is roughly about 12 feet, but then you got waves on top of that, and you got the tide coming in. So they're estimating that we're looking between 14 and 20 feet of water coming in. Yeah, they're saying it's going to affect this storm will basically flood out. Uh, They said they said pretty much anybody within 500 yards of the coast of of the of the of the ocean, the beach gone, which we're sitting here all praying because unfortunately our, our, you know, our, 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 uh, my, my parent in law, they're, you know, they're definitely within their, their block from the beach. So we're. Holding our Just fingers in front of her property and not to be as bad as it could be. I'm, I yeah. hope so too, man. Yeah, yeah. So thoughts are with you. Yeah, yep. Yeah, you know, we'll we'll do it. I, you know what? I love. I, I I I'm fortunate though. I love my in laws. I really do. I mean, they're really cool people. I've always so I don't mind. I don't. I, I'm just like, hey, this is Thanksgiving early. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I've got a good family too, man. I, I it's funny. We're the black sheep of our family. My parents are the hippie kids from yeah. a big Irish Catholic family. So, if anybody's hated, it's us. But we actually we we <laughs> we get along with them great. And I I I love my family yeah. too. It's yeah. fortunate when you love the people that are your closest. Yeah. So I mean that that makes it really really cool. And then like yeah. today, you know, I'm a fat man, so of course they emptied out all their fr- their freezers and refrigerator. I, I was like, this is like Christmas for a fat man. <laughs> yeah, stoked. <laughs> I, got, I got my my in laws bringing food. You know, I've got my sister in law and her boyfriend bringing food. They're all here. It, you know, it's, it, this is like Thanksgiving, and it's also Christmas for a fat man. All this food on yeah. the table, and they eat stuff that Sandy won't won't allow in the house. <laughs> she's like yeah i i haven't seen a twinkie in, i think 10 years <laughs> and i opened up the, it was it was singing to me man it was it was singing to me in the refrigerator it was like open it up it was like oh the angels the chariots come out and, uh, i'm a big fan of twinkies man i've actually i, I sneak a little twinkie every now and again i <laughs> yeah I, I i ate my girlfriend's cupcake the other night she had a a big uh, chocolate, actually, uh, red velvet, creamy cupcake. <laughs> he ate it. I couldn't help it. And he, and he ate it. See, I, yeah. I, I, if I pulled something like that in front of Sandy, I'd pull. She, I mean, she's she's a little she's a little thing. And if I if I pulled anything like that, I'd come back with a stump. She has no no, <laughs> no problem whatsoever just cutting the arm off. <laughs> yeah, well, I so, would make sure she wasn't looking. That's it. Oh, brother. So, hey, you know, talking about food. I got a message yeah. for you. Stop okay. stop eating non food items. <laughs> I watched that. <laughs> I watched that. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, 
I just want to make a movie, man. I don't know wh- why I put myself through that. Honestly, yeah. I seriously, I, if you're watching this, if, what he's talking about is a couple weeks ago we were doing, we were trying to promote this new project, The Circuit. And a, a couple days in a row, I sat down and, and dared myself to get like my head shaved if, if they, if I didn't get the haircut in time. Yeah. So we decided to do nasty foods. And, and if people didn't pledge within a certain amount of time, I'd have to eat these disgusting things. And, and my, my buddy, he opened his fridge and he, he, I don't think the guy like ever throws anything out. So there were just nasty, horrible uh, concoctions of rotten stuff in there. And then he, I almost had to eat them. And thank God the, the fan base came to the rescue and, 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 uh, I didn't have to eat anything like that. Thank God. <laughs> but I got so close that I had a, a literal panic attack. It was, yeah. I remember it. It was garlic marinade and it was rotten. And I could see green stuff growing in it. And there was this fan that was bidding against the fan that was, that was saying that trying to help me. Uh, I think they were both trying to help me to drive the bids up to raise money for the movie, but they didn't realize is that what was in front of me was literally going to kill me. I couldn't watch. Uh, I I started to, and I'm like, I can't, I can't watch this. You know, it's, it's a train wreck and I'm just not one to watch train wrecks. Yeah, and when I turned it off, it's exactly how I felt. I'm like, you know what? I've spent the last year getting together with these actors and writers and directors and filmmakers and making this, like, good stuff. We've been doing good stuff. We want to do something innovative and new and futuristic and multi-genre, brand new idea. Um, and here I am, like, doing jackass, like, throw myself off the bridge. Uh, I'm going to eat this rotten egg stuff. And I was just like, that's it. I'm done. No more of that. Yeah. We're going a different direction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it was, it was, it was pretty, it was, uh, yeah, it, it was disturbing <laughs> to say the least. It was, I was, I was like, please don't eat that. Please, man, just don't do that. I was, I was sending the good, the mojo, the good mojo to you saying, please, yeah. whatever you guys do, please don't let this man eat this stuff. And, yeah. Uh, oh, Lord. You know, since it, yeah. So, how are you guys doing? Uh, we're doing okay, depending on who you talk to. You know, we've raised a, a thirty grand so far. We've still got uh, almost four weeks to go. Sure. Um, we have a two hundred thousand dollar goal, and and we're starting to get the word out there, and we're starting to get some press, and and uh, some people are are talking to us, and 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 getting the idea. The tough part of the circuit is, uh, and by the way, what we're talking about is this project, the circuit, which is. 10 genres it's a new idea so it's a multi-genre anthology piece it's a film uh, feature film but 10 genres that all happen 10 amazing stories or twilight zone like stories that all happen in the same location but we're gonna tell 10 different genres completely different genres so that's a it's it's scary to people people don't can't quite wrap their hands heads around it and they also uh, because of Kickstarter's rules, it's been really difficult for us to get the word out that this is the ultimate fan project. We, we want to team up these guys that have worked on DC's Legend of Tomorrow, uh, you know, Spider-Man 2, Iron Man, these um, amazing producers, writers, and directors, and actors from all over the, the spectrum of fantasy, horror, you know, Tim Russ, Terry Farrell, Robert Picardo, Miltos from Game of Thrones, Cody St. New from Teen Wolf, uh, just, you know, Armin Shimmerman, uh, Ryan Agled from The Blacklist, and, and, uh, he's just talented, talented people. Uh, if you go to the circuit webpage, you can see all 24 of our, you know, famous actors there. Uh, Walter Koenig, you know, we've got sci-fi icons, fantasy stars, um, but then we, what we wanted to do when me and Walter sat down to talk about this a couple of years ago is we wanted to make a project that could give back to the fans that the fans could be involved in. They could be a part of, we could, uh, take all these people that I've met. Uh, and when I say the circuit, I'm talking about the convention circuit, uh, the pop culture convention circuit. Um, that would be the location that all these horror and superhero fantasy, sci-fi, uh, different stories would happen in. And I wanted to, what we haven't been able to get the point across because Kickstarter won't allow us to is that as soon as you pledge, you can then go to the, the circuitfilm.com and submit to be in the movie. So 
for 15 years, I've met talented people at, or, you know, uh, given me scripts or, or showed me something that a short that they, they'd made or, or, uh, some, some visual effects that they'd done on their computer, uh, design all, all these people. Um, I thought there's a bunch of talented filmmakers out there that are trying to get into the industry. Let's do a movie, even the writing. I, we said, let's have half of the fan base write it. Um, It'll be half written by the fan base, half written by the the, the writer. It'll be half written by the fan base, half written by the 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 writer. Did I just lose you? No, no, I'm I'm here. There, there, no, I I think we actually have wins that are going on, and so I've been I've been fighting the internet. No, no, I I'm hearing you, and so they're hearing you. Yeah, so th- I mean that's the bit the big thing is is we want people to know that if they go look at the circuit on Kickstarter that they can immediately go to the circuitfilm.com and submit, contact us, uh, show us what you have, show us why you want to be involved in the project. And for every episode that we finance through Kickstarter, we're going to bring on a number of fans per key department of the episode, and we're all going to make this film together and, and put our talents together. And it also gives people a, a, a chance to work with with people in the industry, get their first credit in the yeah. film. Um and maybe we'll bring on some people that, you know, uh, have already done this stuff. But, um, the idea was a, a big team up and the Kickstarter itself doesn't let you do contests like that. So it's, it's been a struggle to just tell people on the website because they go to the Kickstarter page and nowhere on the Kickstarter page could we write, Hey, you can join this movie if just by showing us your stuff. They call oh. it. A- Right. Contest. I got you because they, they view it not as a as a thing. They're actually buying. If they're actually yeah. buying it. Oh man. Yeah. So that's been tricky because it, it it on Kickstarter just it's just it's a great idea by itself, you know. But on Kickstarter we couldn't say show us your screen. I mean, show us your screenplays. Show us your 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 props. Show us your makeup. Show us your wardrobe. Uh, show us what you do. Th- show us what your talents are and join the project. So that's been something we've had to get out through the press and through the website, through Facebook. And um, it's just a bummer that the site that most people go to, if they're going to pledge, we couldn't tip our hat anyway for them to, uh, you know, come sign up for the submit their stuff. So why um, I, I have to ask, because I'm, I'm curious, you're allowed. Aren't you allowed on Kickstarter to put in a like a an introductory video they just blocked it is that what happens they blocked the video well we're actually the new video is going to be up tomorrow so we we actually did sneak it into the video and we had to figure out a way around their rules and and work with them uh, and they've been pretty cool about it what we wanted to do in the beginning is we wanted to put you know one uh fan per key department of the film in the film um for every episode that we fund so that would have been you know uh, hundreds a uh, hundred plus fans that would join the project but when you limit the number you make a contest out of it i got gotcha. you and, and so we couldn't do that and so in the in the new video we at least are able to, to get across hey send us your submissions and now that we leave it as a vague number they're letting us do it um so the new video will say, "Hey, submit your stuff. Contact us. Get a hold of us. Let's do this together." But yeah. I think that was missing from the from the get go, and hopefully we have time to get that message out there, and, and people will yeah. um, get excited. I mean, because all, all these people on this side, the actors, the writers, directors, actors, are thrilled, and we've put in a couple of hard years' work on this project, bled for it, and uh, all to make something that the fans could be involved in, and, and we could do together. So uh, I think we'll get I think we'll get the message out soon enough. Yeah. You know, I mean, we're we're trying to get it out there. Of course, if you go out to the midnightocean. dot com, you're the only banner. I, I actually broke my rule, and I got in trouble with it with my with my business partners. They were like, "Wait a minute, that's a banner ad. We're not supposed to have banner ads on the site." And I said, "No, no, no." I said, "That's that's no different than me publishing a book." The guy, you know, this is Manu. He doesn't have a book. This is his book. Yeah. <laughs> so so they're like, uh, "Okay." <laughs> the circuit is such a cool idea. But man. that's exactly what I told him. I said, Are you kidding me? 
this is the circuit. I mean, I mean, look at the people that are involved in this project. It is a great project, and it and it goes hand in hand with what we're doing. Kind of, you know, in the sense that we're 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 changing the mainstream concept of of, of media as far as radio goes. And, yeah, and I'm like, yeah, come on, come on. It, it wasn't a hard side. Yeah, I don't want to make it sound like my my partners are are jerks. No, but they were, kept- but they they were like, okay, as long as we make sure that we're not, you know. We're not deviating from our business plan. And no. uh, I was like, no. Nah. All over the globe. We should yeah. get an episode with a radio host in it. We should get everybody's talents on the same page and and, and uh, just get together and make 10 different genres of film. There I think that's, what, that's what's too cool about it is let's make 10 movies in one, see if it can be done, try something that's never been done, and let's do it together as a sci-fi convention fan base and uh, sci-fi and fantasy and horror actors, writers, and directors. Let's yeah. let's do do this on the cheap and, and do this together. Um, and then we, you know, you save the millions of bucks when you do that. So. Exactly. I mean, I mean, getting into the, the finance, what does it cost to put together a production? Well, we put, I mean, it's a highly ambitious project, right? So what we wanted to do was we wanted to, um, make high quality, uh, film and shoot on Ari Alexas and the the digital cameras and the sound equipment and have the toys we wanted to have. And at the same time, we wanted to bring all these fans on, on set and bring, you know, uh, which is going to be expensive. And then we also wanted to film in separate locations. So sure. a company move in, in film is really expensive when you have to take your, your company and go to a different state or a different country. Um, so we did a, a budget for the whole film and the whole film came out to 1.5 million. And that's if we cut every corner that we possibly could mm-hmm. cut. Um, but we could do, it as an episodic for a couple hundred thousand dollars an episode with the actors that we have being kind enough not to charge us an arm and a leg for their work. Sure. Um, and so that's basically it. It's, it's somewhere between 200,000, 150 and 200,000 an, an episode. And then the 10 episodes, uh, come, come around to $1.5 million. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it, it, it's a but the crate the, the neat, you know we have a two hundred thousand dollar goal uh, set on Kickstarter, and I've produced this this would be my third film, and the 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 crazy thing about um, Hollywood is if you have a couple hundred thousand dollars, a good concept, some scripts and some actors, then it's really easy to find other people that have a couple hundred thousand dollars to team up with you. Sure, sure. Um, and so that's really all we need is we need this opening chunk so that I can go to other production entities and other creative investors in, in, in this, uh, this town or this industry and start pitching this idea to them and saying, look, you know, we've got a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of fan money to bet on this. So why don't you guys cough up that or more? And, and takes a couple months, but I, I can probably get the whole thing together if I can get the sure. first chunk. Now, were you up in, I it wasn't, didn't, wasn't there a comic con in New York? Just the other day, uh, this weekend, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I, I, I wasn't there. A few of my cast was there. Um, actually, today I think, or, or there's a comic con starting this weekend, mm-hmm. and, and uh, most of my cast is in the one in Birmingham in uh, uh, England right now. Okay. Um, but they're everywhere, man. That's the thing. The circuit is a worldwide phenomenon happening every weekend on some corner of the globe. And uh, that's what I find so fascinating about it. Fascinating about it. Besides the fifteen weeks that I mean, fifteen years that I spent running around behind the scenes at these things, um, collecting stories from all these crazy actors and crazy people. Yeah. It was all too surreal. I mean, I've been sitting with Harry Potter on my left, Knight Rider on my right, and then the Princess Leia across the table from me in Germany, fighting over stakes. You know. Um, it's just, I've seen too many strange things. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting here laughing. So, hey, Mana, can, can you spend one more segment with us? Yeah, sure. Okay. I know you're very busy, and I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule at uh, talking with my audience. And uh, and we do have some people that are coming on late onto the show, so it would be a good time for me to reintroduce yourself. Uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, we are speaking with uh, Manu Itarami. You know, if you guys are a Star Trek fan, you do your homework. I'm not going to do it for you. 
But we'll be back, and uh, we're talking about his new project, The Circuit. Get behind it. That's what that banner is on our website, The Midnight Ocean. Take a look at it when you can. Actually, take a look at it. I'm just going to cut this out because I can do that tonight. Tonight's Freeform Radio. But uh, take a look at it as soon as you can. It's on TheMidnightOcean.com. You know, these hurricanes, I think they kind of get me a little, little, I don't know, a little weird, a little loopy. But we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with our very special guest, Manu Itarami. Ocean with Jeff Norton on the Paranormal State Radio Network. That is right, Andrew. This is the Midnight Ocean Radio Show and a podcast. I don't know what is going on tonight. Something is afoot. I got Facebook screaming at me, telling me that that I don't own my my content. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe our guest isn't our guest. Maybe uh, our very special guest on Skype, Manu Itorami, is not actually Manu Itorami. <laughs> Who knows? But the Facebook keeps blap- blapping at me and telling me that this is not original content. <laughs> and the and the content owner 
is is complaining or whatever. I, you know, the heck with it. I, I, Facebook, you know, got to love them. I really do for the social media aspect of it. But it, ever, it, it's just crazy. It's insane. They blocked us from posting. We can't even post on people's sites anymore because apparently someone got a hold of our show last night and and, and shotgun posted everybody. But uh, you can always go to YouTube. And that reminds me, if you are on YouTube, make sure that you hit that ever so most important subscribe button. We'd appreciate it very much. If you're on Facebook, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I really don't at this point. And tonight, uh, also on Twitter at the MN Ocean, at the MN Ocean. And of course, you can always find us on the web at www.themidnightocean.com. And man, talk about, <laughs> talk about. Manu, do you own your likeness? <laughs> yes, I do. I, I don't understand it. I, I also have deals with every single actor in this film, and I also have the right to say that these actors were on the shows that they were on. <laughs> um, I think it's just I, Facebook messing with us. I, I, I guess so. I really do. It, you know, it, it was funny because, you know, we talk about – this whole thing about censorship is getting way out of hand. I mean, we, oh, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, no, it's insane. I had, here, here you go. I had Canadian Indie Artist of the Year, Ed Roman, on the show. Ed is a good friend of mine. And we become really good friends through the shows. It's like we're like brothers from a different mother kind of thing. And Ed was like, yeah, man. He goes, the song that I'm up for Indie Artist of the Year. He, yeah, go ahead and play it. He, I mean, he actually is like, yeah, go ahead, dude, play it. You know, let people hear it. So I hear it. And, and sure enough, YouTube they comes back to me and they're like, you can't know that's a copy. And I said, I am doing the interview with the artist who gave me permission on the air. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, you still can't do it. I mean, just recently, I mean, as dumb as it can be, I used to run around in my car lip syncing to a bunch of my favorite music and yeah. just film it just for the heck of it. And that, you can't even do that. Can't anymore. Even, yeah. Well, we got in trouble. Well, we got in trouble because of you. Thank you. Uh -huh. so, so we were we were playing the circuit the audio the the video clip but we were playing the audio portion of it and there's that scene where where you have check um oh my gosh i'm horrible i, I know i'm just check off right so, yeah uh, walter walter walter, walter and and you know you have that that classic uh the, the music playing in the background and they picked up on that and that's what they dinged us for yeah, so, they have like some incredible p computer program that like anything that's ever been out, they yeah. it's listening for it. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, no, it is. And well, I mean, the other day we played uh, 911 tapes of UFO sightings. And one of the things, so they come back and they said, well, the, the you know, the content. And I'm like, I didn't play any music during it. So I go and listen to it. And it's actually Swiss Air who's, you know, they're reporting a UFO and come to find out that you can't play that. Over the internet, they uh, apparently Swiss Air made a copyright claim against it, and said you can't use that in your in your internet. And it's one of their pilots basically saying that he sees a UFO. Oh, uh, man, see, I I think well, the aliens gave us the internet anyway. So yeah. Now they're now okay. they're taking it away. So uh, you know, it, this was supposed to be the great democratization and the great yeah. uh, freedom of, uh, and yeah, I mean. Facebook's a real joke. I, I I want to like start a movement for people to stop using it because I, I, I can't believe how many rules they have. You can't cuss. You can't do yeah. this. You can't do that. You can't show anything uh, to. I mean, I've had a picture of uh, just a girl in a bathing suit taken down, it's, oh. and it's like, why are we deciding to do all of our communication on a censored site? Yeah, I, yeah. It, I, it, it, well, I ran a site for the longest call called Patriot FB. Now that was more, and it was it was a Facebook like page. We made mm -hmm. it look just like Facebook, act just like Facebook, but it was. And uh, I got a cease and desist letter. <laughs> it was, oh, it was yeah. like, no, can't do that. So, uh, yeah, it was. Then that was the the nail in the coffin. But yeah, they. I, I'm almost thinking about going back to MySpace. <laughs> do they even yeah. exist? It's not a bad idea if it's still around. Yeah. It, it was cool. And, you know, they did everything that they could to, and then they even made that Facebook movie, which is even worse, that made yeah. him look like some altruistic, like, great guy. Yeah. Um, I think he, he, t we used to, you know, we used to talk to each other over the, over email. 
And then we all got hooked to this site. And now we have to like, it'd be crazy just for the circuit alone. You, I've spent so much in advertising that yeah. then you, this article where they, they're not even accountable for, there's no way to tell what you've spent your money on or who's seen it or that's right. Uh, um, and, and it's a hocus pocus. All their numbers are un, unrealistic yeah. and, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm not, not happy with the, um, Facebook yeah. either. Yeah. No, Zuckerberg I, came out like, yeah, last week they announced, they said, Oh, the advertising revenue or the advertising numbers is skewed. It's not, it's nowhere near what we say it is. Yeah. But yet they charge you per view, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and uh, yeah, I don't know how it works. I think it's, if it goes by in your feed, that counts as a yeah. view. Like you don't have to sit there and watch it, uh, which is, you know, that's ridiculous. See, I've always said, and I this mean, is all these numbers back, and we're like three million people have seen our trailer. How is it possible that yeah. more people aren't? It was because three million people haven't seen our trailer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I've always said it would be neat if you're an ad agency. What you do is you set up a fil- like an affiliate program, because I, yeah. I tell people all the time, if you want to put my banner up, I'll give you a, a secret, like not a secret code, but a code that you can put behind the banner, and I'll pay you ten cents for every person that clicks on it. I yeah. would rather pay you as a as an individual than pay Facebook because I, I trust you. I don't trust them at all. No, I don't trust them at all yeah. either. So I'll I'll pay you, you know, for every for every click, I'll pay you ten cents a click. Uh on on my banner. I'll give you the code and, and it will be embed you know, the, there'll be a code embedded inside there. And I don't care if someone hijacks that picture and sends it out because at the end of the day, people are still coming to my site. Because they're clicking on that banner, so yeah, <laughs> so yeah, so you're, and that was something that I we implemented, and and I, you know, I'm I'm I've got a, a select few that are that are kind of kicking the tires, and and we're seeing how it works before we roll it out to everybody. Because I'd rather pay my listeners than yeah than pay than pay Facebook and or YouTube. They're more likely to talk to other people about your show, and they're mm. more likely to, to be on board with what you're doing, and and not rob you. That's for sure. <laughs> right. um, <laughs> it, it, yeah, we have to make a move. I, that's it. I'm, I'm with you. I, I, we got to make a movement because I, I th- I'm hoping that people out there are, are as, as disgruntled as I am with yeah. the, the tricky thing that they pulled off. Here, oh, uh, here, here, here's an idea for a script. I got it right here. So yeah. you got you, you. So I got Manu who, who's sitting there, and all of a sudden the Facebook police, you start disappearing, and it's because Facebook has censored your page, so you actually truly don't exist. Yeah, we, that's not bad. <laughs> you, you know, you're sitting there talking, and you're like fading out. You're doing the 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 Back to the Future kind of fade out, and everybody's like, "What's going on? What's going?" On? It's because yeah, because Facebook censored your page. You no longer exist. <laughs> and they have they have close to that much power. They are the yeah. Westworld engineers behind uh, social media. Yeah, yeah, it, it's just they it's, gotta go. They got to go because it used to be free. It used to be cool. You used to be able to talk to anybody you can talk to. Now, if you have a fan page or like a a page like yours, a radio, uh, internet, I mean, uh, entertainment, whatever, you have to pay to talk to the people that have clicked like on your page, you know, if you want to say something to them. And that's a ridiculous amount of power. And that's robbery. Well, well, I mean, they did that to me. They told me because someone, because we're, we're now Facebook live. So someone apparently posted our live feed to a bunch of people because we had a small little contest. I said, look, the, I'll, whoever posts my feed to the most thing at the end of the, at the end of the week, I'm, I'll send you a special thank you gift. Apparently that is in violation of their terms of service because oh, I'm paying. Goodness. So, so yeah. So they said, I, I'm, I'm banned. I can't post none of my, none of the, my shows can now be posted to anybody, uh, for, for 48 hours because, because of the term of service. And then no sooner though, that they did that, they came back to me and they said, Oh, but for $8, we'll, we'll post your feed on, on 400, 400 groups. It's like you pay us eight, no one else can do it. And you're going to be banned for two days for doing it. But if you pay us eight dollars, we'll we'll post your okay. your video to eight or to four hundred people. Oh man! I'm like, well, wait a minute. At what point is that not called extortion? Yeah, I was wondering. You know, when the Facebook Live thing started, they were just allowing celebrities and people yeah. in entertainment to have the live feed, and then they gave it to everybody. And I'm like, why did they give everybody on the world the right to broadcast? What could they possibly? 
Oh, because they're going to charge. Everybody yeah, that's right. For Eight dollars. Uh, and that's that's it. Yeah. So uh, that's why I got nailed. I, I'm, I'm pretty now that I think about it. That's exactly. Of course, they don't tell you why you're nailed. They just say you can't do it. And that's exactly why it just dawned on me. That's exactly why, because I was sitting there going, hey, look, if you post or submit me to other people, we will give you the one that does it at the end. We'll give it we'll, at the end of the week. We'll give a special gift. Basically, it's pay, you know, pay to play kind of thing. And, and Facebook don't like the competition. They're like the government. They don't like the competition. I think they are the government. You want me to want to tell you that? I mean, oh, yeah. you, you're on the spooky radio show. I think they are the CIA. Oh, no, I they are. I, I don't think that they ever. I don't. I don't think the story about this kid in the college inventing this little thing. No. And getting, I think it's all hokey pokey, and it's all a CIA watch program to get us to to tell tell everybody who our friends are and yeah. tell us what we're doing all day long and show pictures of where we are, what we're up to, yeah. and they follow it. And they that's it's straight up. They should just call it CIA book. Yeah, CIA book. Look. No, yeah. it, you know, it's definitely the looking glass. No, no, it is. It, it's very well known that the CIA, that the, who funded. So what happened was, so I'll give you the history of it. Um, yeah. So you had, you had a, a set of spooks, CIA spooks, who wanted to put together this big mesh network of individuals. Well, because of the law, the CIA couldn't do it. Number one, their charter doesn't allow them to to spy on American citizens. Only the FBI can do that. The CIA is foreign. And so the the two directors that put this idea together, they actually supposedly left the CIA and, and became venture capitalists. And they started to look at different DARPA projects. And this and the Facebook became a DARPA project, which, you know, if you know anything about DARPA, that's where all the, the, the scary stuff comes out of. And yeah, they're funding uh, they were given a five. Mark Zuckerberg was given a, a half a million dollar investment by Peter Thole, and and, and who's Peter Thole? P- Peter one Thole of- is one, of, <laughs> and he became seven point. He was one of the CIA directors. Oh, good. yeah. Okay. See, that all made sense. That's funny. I didn't even know the history of it, but I I, I yeah. just went. You know what? They came to that kid and they paid him off to to take credit for this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, he he did it in college, but the problem was is they just didn't have the money to expand, and and so it was a small little college thing, and then and then through DARPA and everything, you know, the CIA, all and those guys, they saw it and they're like, well, wait a minute, you know, instead of us snooping on Americans and building these mesh networks, these these mesh networks of individual individual relationships, what we're going to do is that uh, we'll let people freely give up their information. Through Facebook yeah. and their relationships and stuff. And so it's, yeah, I mean, it, I, I just, I find it funny that my Facebook page is my friends and family, but yet Facebook keeps on sending me, oh, do you know this guy? It's like, no, I don't know that. Oh, <laughs> I do who this person is. But then if I open up a social media Facebook page, which I've done for our website, and, and so I'm bringing out, they're like, well, wait a minute, you don't know these people. What are you doing? It's like, well, well, well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, on one page, you're telling me that, uh, that I do know these people and I need to sign them up on another page. You're saying you don't know these people and you need, you can't sign them up. I'm just like, whatever you guys are, it is, it, it's, it's one big honey pot is all it is. It's one big melting cesspool of honey, pot. <laughs> it's just, it's crazy. It it's insane. And, but you're right. We need to. Uh, no, we, get a, we need we to figure out another train. way. We're all getting taken for a big ride on this thing. We need. It's time for a new, you know, MySpace. Somebody like that to come yeah. out and let's switch it up. Yeah, and you know what? What we need, and maybe I'll get with some of my my computer guys. What we need is is your network is your computer, so you can build like a a, a mesh network where when you plug your computer into the network, your 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 node or your computer is the it's you so that way when you unplug your computer from the network your stuff goes away so it's you not, have control right. over your stuff and who sees it yeah and when it's live and when it's when not. it's live and when it's not exactly i mean you can have like a caching system but then you can have a rule that's built in there that says look if the person hasn't signed in in the last 30 days then we delete it out of the cache yeah. gone there there you go i'm patenting it we're gonna pat that's how we're gonna raise money for your movie the circuit that's how we're gonna do it <laughs> I, I, I'm serious. You think I'm joking? I'm serious because I think that's what we should do. Because then you own the data, you control who sees it ultimately, 
and and it's not bought and sold, right? I mean, it's yeah. wow. There you go. We just hashed out an idea. There, there you go. And we're gonna we're gonna get funding for it, and we're gonna fund your movie. But yeah, but, but more more importantly, so you got how, you got thirty days, twenty four days. We have a twenty to a little over. I think it's a little over twenty four days uh, left to go. Twenty. Well, maybe twenty three days and like eighteen hours or something. And like you've that. already raised thirty thousand. Yeah, but we have awesome. to raise another hundred and seventy thousand to get to our goal in the next uh, three and a half weeks. So, uh, people, it's really important that if people dig this concept, uh, 10 genres, all that happened over the weekend of a, a fictional mega pop culture con, yeah. um, and that they get to for five bucks, you don't have to, you have, don't have to donate the, the full amount. Um, there's all different sorts of perks you can get from five bucks all the way up to 10 grand. And of course we have t-shirts and stickers and hats and buttons and cups and coffee mugs and lanyards and all that stuff. Um, but for five bucks, uh, as, as long as you donate any amount, you can then go to the circuitfilm.com and contact us anywhere through the uh, Twitter, Facebook, our email, our website, whatever, uh, and tell us why you want to be a part of the film. Send us some pictures, send us a video, send us whatever you want to, and just show us your passion for filmmaking and, and what part of film you want to be involved in. Amazing. And we're going to put together a super team of uh, the professionals that we have. We have a really small, talented crew. Um, and then we're going to stock it with fans from around the world and we're going to make some innovative, new, super cool, uh, episodic film. Cool. Now, do you, do you have like a promo button or anything like that? So when someone goes to donate where they can put in like a message to you guys? Yeah. Uh, of course, when you uh, donate, you can start talking to us and, and okay. That's the way that uh, Kickstarter is set up. Sure. You can immediately con send messages to us back and forth in the comment section, or uh, we go we all get each other's emails when it when we when you come in. But also, if you just go to thecircuitfilm dot com, you can send us a message. You can send me a message at monuentereme at thecircuitfilm dot com directly. Uh, that's the easiest way to get straight to me. Right. Well, this is this is what I'm going to do, Mono, because I I, I want to get behind this for you. So for anybody that goes out and clicks on the link and you guys donate that's a listener listening to this show, make sure you put in there the Midnight Ocean, that you came from the Midnight Ocean. And uh, and Manu, can you let me know who those individuals are? And I will send them a limited edition Midnight Ocean coffee mug and a T-shirt. Oh, that's awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we'll, we'll give them a shirt as well. We'll throw in a, a coffee mug and also a limited edition T-shirt. Make sure you put in there your size so Mono can shoot that back to me. I hope you. I get. I hope you get overwhelmed. I hope you get a hundred thousand people and you're like calling me up saying, "Jeff, you son of a." Yeah, you just owe uh, you owe people a hundred thousand T-shirts. By the way, I just, that's fine. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> I, I don't care, man. Because then, if, if I owe a hundred thousand T-shirts and you owe me something, buddy. That's true. <laughs> so <laughs> that's that, that is how that works, isn't it? Yeah, well, I, I, I know how Hollywood works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. That's it. It's favors, man. Favors and friendships. That's yeah. how the world works. Man, I, uh, I, yeah. I I wish you the best of luck, and you will get a donation from from the Norton household. It's uh, we're we're yeah yeah. I was looking. I was going to ask you how the Kickstarter goes because we we actually have. I have until the first of the year to get all of our radio studio. We have our equipment, but we're getting uh, over terrestrial radio, and I there's certain equipment I have to do. And I'm like, uh, should I should I go hat in hand? Does it work? And uh, it sounds like yeah. it does. It really does. Yeah, it does. If you if you've got a concept, people people dig. I mean, it. I mean, thirty grand's not anything to bat an eyelash at. Um, no, that's um, that's people that that dig the concept that have given their their money to it. So, is there uh, another way? Now, what happens? I, I do. Well, so uh, this isn't going to happen. So, can you can you like re up for another thirty days or or no? No. Well, you can. You can. Well, if you make your goal. Uh, there's something on Kickstarter called Spotlight that you can stay open and continue to raise money for your film. Roger. Uh, and on Indiegogo, there's it's something else you can stay open. It's called In Demand on Indiegogo. Like okay. if you've made the goal, you've proven that you've got a good concept, you've proven people want to see it, so you can stay open. And then you can run more campaigns. Uh, if we don't, um, then I'm kick the cool thing about Kickstarter too is you know th they're honest. If we don't make our goal, everybody gets their money back. So it's it's not really a donation until we hit our goal. Until then, it's a pledge that I'm down to give this much money to you guys if, if everybody else is. Um, 
And if you don't make your goal, everybody gets, they don't even get their credit cards charged. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, but Indiegogo is different. And that's why we decided not to do Indiegogo. We didn't, we knew that we needed $200,000 to make something great. You know, um, people had already invested in this and, and we had certain costs uh, for the last, you know, we shot like 10 great little teaser videos with some of these actors. And, um, we knew the number that we needed to get to, to get the rest of this thing done and, and to get started. And if we didn't hit that number, we didn't want to be stuck with like, you know, uh, a small amount of money and a bunch of t-shirts to make. And, uh, you know, so the, I, people don't really think about that in crowdfunding that, um, getting halfway there wouldn't be a blessing, you know? Yeah. It would, well, like, yeah. and, in, and that's what Indiegogo does. They just, keep, you know, you, even if you don't hit your goal, goal, you can keep the money. And a lot of people then end up keeping the money, but then not finishing their films and not, not, not doing what they should do with it. Sure. Um, so, that's why we pick Kickstarter is all or nothing, baby. Um, yeah, no, man. I, I, I and I, I, I'm behind you. I, I guess for what that's worth. And I'll, I'm going to be yeah. on a couple shows tomorrow. So I'll be definitely doing that. Uh, you know, telling them about you. And, uh, well, it's, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a huge dream and it's a, I'd certainly, I'd certainly love to see it realized. I, I saw Adam Nimoy's film for the love of Spock. I don't yeah. know if you've gotten a chance to see that yet, I haven't but, yet, but I, I've heard about it. Yeah. It was an interesting journey because I met those guys. Uh, it was Adam Nimoy's film is about his father, uh, Leonard Nimoy, who played Spock. And he was able to uh, fund that film on Kickstarter to the tune of close to $700,000. And I met him a couple months ago. And then one of his producers from the film has come on to the circuit. And I, I, I kind of swam in that guy's circle for a couple months and, and went to his uh, premieres when he showed the movie in, in uh, the Egyptian theater in Hollywood. And it was really, a, I can't tell you how cool the vibe was to see like 700 people packed into the, a big theater. And, yeah. and then at the end, uh, the credits rolled and they showed six and a half minutes of Kickstarter donations, uh, put their names in bold and, and let them go up the screen. And you could, you could feel that there were people in that room that had given to the project and that, that it really was this, you know, a community of fans that had made this beautiful film happen. Wow. And it, the buzz, it was quite a buzz. And I, I was like, man, I want that to, I want to be a part of something like that. So yeah. that's what we're trying to do here. But with, um, we're trying to create the new Twilight Zone and, and mix it with a little bit of comedy and mix it with, uh, a little bit of everything and, and just make, um, you know, I want to make the new twilight zone, man, but at one fun location. Yeah, I got you, man. I, I, I'm with you. I'm down with it. Like I said, I will, I will definitely, uh, promote the heck out of it. And, yeah. uh, I'm going to be on a couple shows tomorrow myself. If, if I'm still here, well, I'm going to be here, but if we still have internet and, and everything, so I, I will definitely make sure I get the word out and all of the, all of my fellow podcasters out there. Make sure you guys can grab the link off of our off of our page, link to it, and get it out there. But once again, for all of our listeners, when you click on the link, you make your donation. Make sure that you put in there that you you know heard heard about it through uh, TMO. Make sure you give the size in the comment section of the shirt that you want, and then Manu will get that back to me if if we're a go, and I'll make sure that you guys get a shirt and a limited edition coffee mug. And uh, yeah. Cool. You can get a, cool you get a shirt and a midnight ocean shirt. And a midnight, that's, that's right, because the circuit. I'm I'm going for the script. I want. I, I looked at Sandy and then she's like, "No." And I'm like, "Come yeah. on, I want the script, man. I want the I want the the coffee stained script." <laughs> <laughs> oh, the script from the film. From the film, yeah. For well, it yeah. was uh, wasn't it uh, Quark? Uh, we, well, yeah, we have five scripts of his his last scripts from um, DS Nine that yeah. are part of. Works. and uh we dropped them down to a grand a piece so Ooh. Uh, yeah what a deal no, a look um pretty cool of him to donate that stuff yeah. to us too armin shimmerman has been just uh he's been awesome for us he's uh promoted it and he's he's in london this this weekend showing some new teasers that we haven't released in uh in birmingham not london um and so is walter and uh he's just a I don't know if you guys ever get a chance to, to, to meet Armin Shimmerman, one of the kindest, most talented, uh, actors around, just not full of himself and, and just stuffed full of talent and kindness and good person. 
I think all you guys are, though. I mean, to be honest with you, I, I, you know, I've watched the the trailers, and it seems just so so fun. I mean, yeah, I, I had not I didn't hire any a holes. Everybody on the team is really pretty damn cool. I don't want to work with anybody that's full of themselves. So, yeah. I mean, you know, if anybody on the team is a jerk at all, it's I'm probably the biggest jerk there. Maybe uh, looking around at my cast. Maybe me and Walter. We're both a little curmudgeon-y, but we're good people. <laughs> you get through. You get through. <laughs> hey, man, can you give me a sound bite? Here we go. I'm going to get you on here because, you know, I can't play your advertisement. So can you give me a little yeah. sound bite that I can play back uh, during breaks? Sure. Here we go. I'll shut up. There you go. I'm Monuente Reme. I played Icheb on Star Trek Voyager, and I'm trying to get the most fan collaborative project together in the history of Hollywood. It's called The Circuit. Check it out at the Circuit Movie on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and go check out our website at thecircuitfilm.com. Pledge today, and let's make a multi-genre anthology film that all takes place over the weekend of a pop culture convention. It'll be cool, and we need your help. <laughs> Beautiful, man. That was awesome. See, there you go. That was a, that was a good read. Yeah. You, not you've done bad. this before, haven't you? <laughs> 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 See, I couldn't. I, I, I could never do. It. That's the one thing is that it, I can't script anything. I have to just. Uh, it just comes to me. Then that's why I sound like crap on the radio. Most of the no, time. you got a good radio voice, man. Plus, you got Thanks. a good personality. It's Thanks. Jeff Norton from Midnight Ocean. Hey, uh, Jeff. Do you yeah. like the script of Q2 from DS9? It's signed by like five of the cast members from DS9. No. Looks like you got a gift, man. What? I can have my dad send it down to me. Um, Sirock gave it to me. Like Sirach Lofton ago. gave her a script a couple years ago. She's like, he can have it. I'll give it to them. Are you <laughs> si- no way? <laughs> I'll see if I can get some other people to sign it before I send it to you. Like, see who I have on it. No <laughs> way! I'm like, I'm all like jumping up and down. <laughs> I'm, gonna tell my dad to send it to I'm jumping all up and down. What I, uh, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and we'll put it. You know, that's one thing I told Sandy. I'm like, we got to build it. We got to finish building our studio here because I've got to put all of my little knickknacks in the back and and everything. It's, you know, it's going to go right next to my giant bone. I have a giant femur that's coming and a, and a star child bone. Uh, the uh, one of the the oblong Peruvian star children. Oh wow! No Your way. script. Cool. I'm going to have the giant bone, the femur. The Peruvian star child head and right in dead center, I promise you, is going to be that script. Hey, send me some links to some cool UFO alien stuff, man. I haven't read anything cool for a while. Hey, you get the you get the like the up to date stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, we get some pretty some pretty cool things. We're work. I'm working on a project uh, right now with Brad Olson. He wrote the Esoteric series. You got to read his series. I mean, if you want some cool stuff. He's got a whole series called the Esoteric. It's the Eso- It's Brad Olson. Brad um, Olson. Yeah, and it's all real stuff. This is like underground bases. Uh, it, it's esoteric, and it's got the UFOs. I'm gonna have. Oh, we're. I'm gonna have Doctor Ram on on Monday. Yeah, just listen. We played this week was UFO week, so this week we played nine one one tapes. Um, yeah. The 911 tapes, and then yesterday we played alien, well, not yesterday, the day before we played alien abduction tapes, people that were actually under hypnosis through an alien abduction, and then yesterday wow. we had a uh, the, a crew specialist, uh, she is she 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 knows about the Challenger investigation, the Columbus, she was all part of that, that event. so she came on the air and, and was talking about what really happened, and it was wow. it was interesting, it was, it, it, you know, nothing, nothing two way out there she's a scientist and so it wasn't yeah. way it wasn't like you know alien spaceships came and blew up the challenger or anything it was the actual true science behind that and um yeah. so yeah no dude i'll 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 hook you up i'll hook you up we're uh uh doing some some things with mufon as well which is uh kind of interesting yeah. so yeah we're doing a whole series that like i said i'm going to be in the studio Oh, this whole weekend, uh, doing like, I got like eight interviews that we're doing back to back to back to put this whole series together. That's going to be coming out in another month or so. So yeah, but but I'll, I'll hook you up, man. I'll hook you up. I'll, uh, I'll send you, we'll, we'll exchange whatever we need to exchange addresses or whatever, but I'll send you some, some cool books. 
Yeah, just yeah. Uh, when I went to Ramey at the Circuit Film, or uh, uh, ad, man, I don't care. Everybody can have my address. I'm trying to get a film together. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, don't give out your ad- dude. Trust me, you, my my audience. Yeah. You don't want to give out your address because <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> no, you no. <laughs> you'll have them. They, they you know, when I did my other podcast, there's many a times where I would go outside and there's someone standing there, and I'm like, who are you? It's like yeah, oh. I've had a few of those too. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, yeah. Well, you're used to it a little bit more so than I am. Uh, yeah. it, you know, I had the voice. They would wait, at least they would wait for me to speak. Yeah, don't just show up. Like you know, get, ask me permission yeah. first, for God's sake. No, no, they just show up. Right? That's what yeah. I'm saying. Oh. See, for you, you're you're recognizable. People know who you are because you're you're all over the you know all over the internet. Well, now that I'm on video, I, I'm recognizable now. But mm-hmm. the thing is, is that it used to be the day where literally I would have people that would sit there when I did my other podcast. And these are like gun toting people. These are like, these were political podcasts. So these are some scary yeah. folks. And, uh, and they would wait until I said something. And then they were like, Oh, you're the, you know, it's like, huh? <laughs> no, that's not me. We just sound alike. <laughs> but, uh, um, I haven't heard the term esoteric. Hook me up. What's what do you mean esoteric? Esoteric are things that are that are kind of secret that everybody should know, but they're being withheld from people because oh, you shouldn't okay. know. Only only certain elitists uh, know these things. These are these are like the secret UFOs, the the hidden bases, the things that people everybody should know or be aware of, but uh, but they're not, and and it, and they're it's intentionally withheld from us. The billionaire club, uh, yeah. One, one- yeah. yeah, I mean, it, it, Brad Olson, uh, Brad's a great guy, and he he is uncovered. He, you know, he's on. He does a lot of the ancient alien shows and different different shows. So he's you know he's more more of the research guy. And uh, I found him. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. But yeah, he did an interview. It's funny. Uh, he did an interview with me, and it was hilarious because everywhere in the world that he's been, I was there about the same time as well. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that was it. Was really bizarre. My my, you know, my my mother listens to the show. Thank God she's still alive. And she was like, "That was freaky." The fact that he was in Oregon when you were in Oregon, that he was in Japan when you were, you know, and we're just going down the list. And it was just, it was crazy. How and we never really bumped into each other, but yet we were we were in the same exact place. Yeah, yeah, it's just insane. But a great guy, but. Yeah, I'll I'll hook you. I got some uh, I I got some things I can send you that will really make you think. Make you think. Yeah, I don't know, man. I I, I you know, yeah, I'm gonna check this guy out. Sorry, I'm just this. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking it up now. And yeah, yeah, no. Stuff. Read it. He's got the esoteric series, and these are all things research. You know, underground bases. Uh, oh, I can hook you up with a bunch of guys. I mean, and these are guys. Yeah. Go ahead. You know what I was about to say is I, it's a bummer that I know this about myself, but you know I'd like to say that I was like a super good moral guy and I was going to be like the the people's champion. Yeah. But I I don't know if you let me into that club and I got to see all that stuff, I might just keep it secret too. I, I you know I, I might just I I, I want to drink the magic Kool Aid. I get, just give me in the club. I want a but, secret ride on the spaceship. Uh, um, unfortunately, Manu, is that once you're invited to the club, you yeah. you don't want to talk about. It. It's like the Fight Club; you don't talk about it because they have ways of of getting rid of you the minute you do. Yeah, I yeah. think that would be. I, I'm sure. I'm sure they would, but I, I wouldn't. Uh, I don't think I would try to expose it. I think I'd yeah. be like, "Yes, I'm on the ship. Uh, All right, yeah, I'm right. on the secret yeah. underground trains. Yeah, I, this is cool. This, this is, is cool. cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is cool. Too bad. And you'd be like, "Too bad, Walter didn't know about this." Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna tell Walter right now. No, that's funny. Yeah, all those years, Walter, that you were playing, playing, and, and you thought you were an iconic figure. Well, guess what? I'm in the well, club. Here's I'm the to Mars next week. That's right, little- buddy. I'm going to yeah. Mars, and I'm actually going. You know, it's fun. Hey, talk about I a project. The backside of the moon last weekend. What'd you do? Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I went and saw Alvis. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw Alvis on the moon. He was live. He's yeah. looking good for his age. 
Hey, that Aurora plane's out there, man, or oh, whatever yeah. that thing is. There's no doubt about that one. Yeah, yeah. We were. It was funny. We were actually. There's a high energy weapon that uh, was discharged, and actually, Brad, when he was on the show, we were talking about that as well. Um, and and he's been. That's one of the projects that he's he's running down. But check this out. So I, I got to ask you: Do you know any independent film guy? Well, of course you do. Let yeah. me tell. You, let me tell you what I've been dared to do, and they're setting it up. There's two very well-known haunted houses in, in Ohio, or haunted places in Ohio. One of them's a bar. Yeah, and, that bar with the hole in the basement, yeah. the hell hole in the basement. Yeah. So they're going to lock me in. I, I'm going by myself. No one else, no one else is going to be in this, in this bar with me. I'm going to do a live broadcast. We're trying to get it done like over Halloween if we can, if we can get the permissions to do it. And I think it, it might happen. Some of our listeners are arranging for it right now. And so it's just going to be me doing a live show from that bar, taking questions and doing things kind of like you and your, in your food thing. Hey, look, I'll, I'll, you know, it's like, go, go do this, go do that, Jeff. But I would like to video. I think it would be awesome to videotape it. Oh, you have to videotape it, man. Yeah. I mean, like set up video cameras. I don't mind having video cameras throughout the place as I'm walking through and doing all of that. But that's the first one. Now, that one that is like, yeah, that's a slam dunk. That's no big deal. I mean, I, I haunted houses. That's no big. The next one is, is that they're going to, they want me to, they're arranging for me to go to the state penitentiary, penitentiary where, uh, Shay shot or shame shock redemption. I can't never say it. Shawshank, Redemption, Shawshank yeah, yeah. Redemption was filmed. And this is like the notorious haunted house. This was a sane asylum slash prison. And they're and they're gonna lock me in there for a night. Ooh, I don't think you're gonna like either one of those places, man. That that bar place is that's like a demon down there. Yeah. I, I've seen some pretty creepy stuff from that. I think if we're talking about the same bar, it's like uh it, it's they think the porthole to some sort of weird. Yeah, it, it's known. It's known and they you know, ghost hunter, all the ghost hunters go there. But the problem yeah. is they all go with like four or five of them. It's like I wouldn't go by myself. No, you wanna go yeah. I mean you might, uh, I, I don't know if I'm going to want to talk to you after that experience. You, you, you might be opening yourself up to some creepy stuff right there. You might get possessed or something. That, uh, well, I am going to have, it, it's funny, I'm going to have a support team with me after the fact. I've already, uh, uh, I already have a demonologist that, that I've already got queued up that's going to be there. Um, I'm going to have Lloyd Auberbach, who I'm, I'm working, I got to reach out to him because he's the science guy. So what I, what I want to do is hook up EEGs. And the mm -hmm. heart thing, so you can like look at my brainwave activity as I'm as I'm getting the crap scared out of me. I'd actually really like to do that too. I, that's a, that's exciting. I, I saw a ghost when I was a young man. Yeah, yeah you uh, told that not, story. Not even a young man, a young boy. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't seen anything since that's uh, supernatural, at least. And that that would be that would be quite a kick in the pants to get another experience just to. Uh, just to sort of wake you up and go, oh wow, hey, that that was pretty weird. Maybe that is uh, happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, so good time. So maybe I I have to get with you and see what I need to yeah. get equipment wise. Because I know when. That. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't want any, I don't want a film crew. I don't. I, I just want me doing it. El natural. <laughs> yeah, you need a nice shot that, that that gets the whole location and just uh, is can run all night and. You're gonna go stay there through the night. Or I'm gonna what? say I'm gonna do the show. I'm gonna do the show live, so I'll, I'll probably enter in the facility about nine o'clock, and yeah. and then you know with my little internet connection and uh, through my mm -hmm. my little zip zip line, my IP codec, uh, just take calls. Have someone out. You know, we'll probably have a crew out outside who will be feeding the calls into me, and and I'll be taking people's calls and talking and interviewing people. We'll have guests on. That night, and then of course people will, yeah. You know, when I'm at the prison, will say, "Hey, go lay down in the cell," and then I'll do that. Yeah, you know, I'll do the show for four hours, and then I'm gonna have about four hours of of just hanging out, right? So I'll, I'll take requests from people. I'm actually going. I'm gonna do something similar. It's wild that I might want to talk to you about tech because we were thinking uh, for the circuit, we're looking over the specs right now to try to go uh, a mobile feed and go live to break the world record for live internet broadcast um 
uh, with video. Oh. And the, the record was set in Germany at 150 hours. And so the last week of the campaign, I'm not going to go on there and eat nasty stuff again, but I'm going to go li- try to go live for 168 hours and shatter the record by 18 sure. hours. But we're looking into the prices and, and techs and, and what that really would cost to pull it off uh, and not lose your feed and, and go dark and um, pretty tricky stuff. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously you got YouTube. YouTube has no uh, YouTube or Twitch. I can tell you right now, you can go with Twitch. They would probably let you do it because uh, of who you are. Um, but Twitch, if, if I did something like that, because you're you're going to attract more people on the Twitch, you know, from the Twitch. Those are the gamers. Those are the cosplay guys, and uh, the Twitch. They and they they have feeds all the time. They they actually have the technology to do it where they'll they'll live feed turn. Uh, uh, games, ter- tournaments, uh, like five, six days straight. Wow. Yeah. So that would, uh, that would, that would be the, dr- yeah, I'll help you, man. Whatever yeah. I can do. I'm here it for would, you. It would be seven days, 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I would go, yeah. Twitch, like I said, Twitch has the ability. They, they, and, uh, you know, obviously I would, I would record, I would record local, but Twitch is straight, uh, a straight feed service. Like if you use YouTube, the problem with YouTube, is number one, you're going to have to worry about obviously, um, a copyright. If someone plays music in the background or you sing, you know, you hum something while you're in your delirious state of no sleep, uh, yeah. you know, or something like that. For, for three days, we're going to be at the convention too. So Same. it's going to be all sorts of things playing in the background. Yeah. Where's the convention at, man? Uh, it's in downtown LA at Kamikaze where we're trying to set this thing up. It, this is if we do this. I, I'm, I'm sort of sneaking the announcement out there that we might. Um, but yeah, it would be the last three days of our campaign and it would be at the, at the uh, downtown Ka- Stanley's Kamikaze downtown. Let me, let me, I know three of the top. Well, they're, they're up there. They, they have a, you know, half a million three quarter of a million to a million uh youtube followers okay. these, these are big time gamers that i know that i know of and you know they're into that that they do those shows see what you need to do is is get hooked up i mean i'm a, I'm a small fry compared to these guys i mean these guys already have a, a million people that follow them when they put a video up they have a you know four hundred thousand views yeah uh, you know per video so uh let me let me see what I can. When is when is the uh, com- well? That's it's coming up. Uh, yeah, it's the end of November. I mean, end of October. It's a twenty eight, twenty nine, and thirty. Let's, okay. Uh, let me let me see. Let me let me see what I can do. I mean, yeah, and that's yeah, who you need to hook up with. One of those guys who already has you know a million followers because that's yeah. instant two hundred thousand. And then you know, and then the thing is, is that they're all good friends. All three of them are all best buddies. And so you you know you go on one and you go on the other you go on the other and but yeah if I was doing it I wouldn't do YouTube I'd go Twitch yeah I'd Twitch look, yeah look into it yeah look into it because they're they're really they're they're geared for for what you're doing YouTube man nah, you're you're gonna have issue I, you know especially at Comic Con or any kind of thing where you have characters walking by you you know you yeah. have Hasbro go hey you can't show that yeah <laughs> you know or, who or Disney I guess is now the New one, you know, Disney. You can't show that the mouse, somebody, the mouse mafia. When somebody puts a mouse costume on and walks by me, and I get my feet cut, yeah. That's, well, yeah, that's, they just take his head off. I can't stand the mouse. The, we call them the the mouse mafia around here because you don't yeah. do anything. Like today, here, here you go. You have the hurricane blowing in. You have seven million people who, whose lives are going to be affected. And you know what was on the news today here in our area? What one and there's only been three times that Disney World has ever been shut down. Oh, <laughs> that was the okay. lead newscast. It was like you got seven million people who are you know that are that are going to be affected by this hurricane, and you're going to sit there and tell us about Disney, Disney World. World. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's like get your priorities straight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever your desk editor is, ought to be shot in the head. But you know. Uh, of course, Walt Disney owns ABC and all of the other, or whoever they own that. Yeah, I'm I'm going to get banned for like a week. <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm trying really hard, man, to get banned for a week. <laughs> yeah, they I mean, own every 
it's a you know what are there five left conglomerates that own the whole uh, broadcasting. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's yeah. why this thing has got to work. We've got to we've got to take over. You, know. you got to blow. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. Even in Hollywood, I mean, I I, I look at all what well, you got all of these different distribution companies. They're all owned by the same like four or five people too, right? Yeah. And they, well, and all the little distribution companies all just end up selling to those guys and yeah. taking taking half your your split while they do it. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's just yeah, and and then, you know, you know this all the the score. The same people that own the banks, own the media, they own the oil. They all own it. It's just two hundred billionaire, multi billionaire families, trillionaires. Yeah. Uh, painting this whole little uh, place that we walk around in. I, Westworld's pretty fun, man. I was watching West. Did you see Westworld last night? yet. No, I haven't. I haven't seen it yet. I've got it on. Uh, we actually uh, uh, we dropped. Uh, we unhooked, and uh, but we got the Netflix and and the uh, and um, Hulu, and they have the special where you can actually get uh, HBO. That's an HBO one, right? That's the HBO one. Yeah, yeah, HBO yeah. One. And we're gonna get HBO on demand or whatever. Okay, that we're doing too. I'm doing that next month. I'm yeah. k- killing the cable and and uh, yeah, unhook that thing, man. Yeah, <laughs> unhook that thing. I mean, we did a cost. You know, here I am. I'm, we're we you know, dish. <laughs> I'm gonna get everything turned off right at the door now. But dish, <laughs> dish was costing us like 180 bucks a month or whatever for dish. Yeah. And I'm sitting there looking at Sandy, going, "Well, Sandy, how many shows do you actually watch?" And she's like, four or five. And I watched I watch documentaries. That's my thing. And I'm yeah. like, all right, so so the documentaries that I watch, I can get for free. They're on they're on Hulu or they're on Netflix. It's no yeah. extra. And Netflix and HBO are loaded with good documentaries. Yeah, yeah. And I'm and I'm like, so what shows do you get? And well, those are all on Hulu. She has one show that she likes that is not on Hulu. Well, you can go to Amazon Prime and download that. Yeah, for, you pay nineteen bucks. I'm like, okay, so you pay seven dollars or eleven dollars for Netflix. You pay whatever or not Netflix or Hulu's seven dollars because I don't mind the one you know the A roll the B roll in it. Then you got uh, Netflix, which is you know I think fifteen dollars for the Netflix. All right, so so there that's that, and then you add your additional movie onto that. So you're looking at uh, you know thirty dollars a month. And an additional nineteen dollars for your series that you 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 just have to have that you can't live without. Yeah, and I am getting rid of my hundred eighty dollar bill next month, no doubt. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, nuke it, man. Get rid the of only it. reason I'm not nuking it is to to keep my uh, internet on going for the for the next three weeks while I get this project up and running. But well, then yeah, I'm yeah. out of. But you can get internet, man, without. It'll be off for a little bit while they switch it over. Yeah, I don't risk it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, that bill is ridiculous, man. Open my cable bill. I'm just, what do I do this every month for? Yeah, what do I be? You know, beat my. Well, we do that with the phone bills now. That's what now that that's that's. I'm 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 kicking over to Skype on the phone bill where I'm just using. I what I paid eighteen dollars for three months for a phone number on Skype. Oh wow, that's not a bad idea. And then oh. and then you you have your phone number. You have your phone. I mean, you still need an, an internet phone, but then you can get, you know, for fifty dollars. Hey, hey, yeah, I I realize that that we spend way too. No wonder we're all broke. I know <laughs> because we spend way too much money on crap. Where our parents were, they didn't have all these distractions. No, you know, I, I remember the day when you used to make a, a, a call to your friend's house. It's like, get out the phone. It's cost me ten cents a minute. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, but <laughs> but now, but they didn't have three hundred dollar phone bills because you learned to get on your ten speed bike and go right over to your friend's house. Oh. But now it's like, uh, I don't know. I, oh, what's the world yeah, coming the phone. to? Don't even get me started on the phone. Freaking iPhone! I play AT and T iPhone bill. Ugh. You got an iPhone? Mm-hmm. Go to go to the Midnight Ocean website, midnightocean.com website, type in NSA. I show you how to find out if your phone is being monitored by the NSA. Oh, sure they are. Why wouldn't they? No, be? no, you got to do it. There's instructions and it shows you exactly you will you will freak out, my friend. I will do it and I'm guessing that they are. My yeah. name is Manuente Reme. I'm a freaking uh subversive celebrity type they they they've got to know 
that yeah. they need to watch me. And I just said that on your radio broadcast. If they weren't, they're doing it now. Yeah, that's right. They, well, absolutely, because you've been on my show. Yep. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. I, 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 I should have gave you that disclaimer. Oh, by the way, you coming on to this show will instantly put you on some watch list. Yeah, no doubt. No yeah, doubt. I don't want to fly anyways. No. <laughs> I don't want to fly. What uh? What do I do? I go to your I go to your website. Yeah, go to the go to the midnightocean dot com. Okay. And then in the search bar, type in NSA because I I think the story has been probably pushed down. So in the search bar, if you scroll down, you'll see a, a go right under YouTube. Stream. You know my my site. I gotta clean this up. There's too much crap on here. I already tell you that. I got yeah. Android. I got that. But if you scroll down, you type in NSA, and I'm sure it'll bring up the uh, the NSA article. Okay. And it's, uh, let's see, I'm doing it myself. Yeah, there it is. NSA, check if NSA is listening to your phone. And there's instructions on what you need to do to type into your, in, type into your phone. I'm, get, I'm showing how to backdoor your phone. And then get into the phone, and it will tell you what, yeah, it's crazy, man. It'll, it'll tell you who's, who's It will looking. tell you where your phone, your phone IP address is connected to the DOD. So that means all of your IP traffic, all your phone traffic, when you uh, when you use your phone, is, is all that all that data, all that metadata is going to the DoD, and it's in Ohio. It all goes to Ohio. Yeah, it's like everything happens in Ohio. Ohio right? don't they have one in a. They have a underground. Well, it's probably going everywhere. But they were building a. Oh, that was the one. Was it Ohio? No, that's the one in Utah. The big the Utah. big NSA building. Yeah, that's in yeah. Utah. But no, the data gathering is in Ohio. And what's in Utah? I remember Utah, they were building a Utah is the facility, the storage facility. They're storing all. That's of it. where they store it all. But yeah, it all goes through Ohio. And the reason why it goes through Ohio is because that was where the. Um, someone told me at one time that was where they reconcile your taxes. If you look uh-huh. at your tax returns, you're Ohio. So that's where all that data, that database is stored. Where then what they do is they take your phone information and they, and they, they uh, coordinate it with your personal information and your financial information. And then they build their profiles from you. Just saying. Uh, it's, man. it's some scary stuff. I was on the air. I, so I'm sitting there on the air and a guy, a guy calls in. He's a hacker. And he calls in and he, and he shows me how to do this. And yeah. that night when we were doing it on the air, our, uh, we were getting kicked off of YouTube. We were getting all sorts of stuff was going on. And uh, the, oh, the, our website, I posted the instructions on how to do it. Our website got taken down. And it got pulled down. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, they did. They pulled our website down. So our the website that you're looking at now, now it might be back in our data center in, in Michigan. We use a company that has a data center in Michigan and one in Greenland. And so when our site went down, they switched it over to Greenland instantly for us. And they're like, they can't shut it down there. It, it's it's illegal. There's treaties. <laughs> Wait a second. Who did it for you? Uh, it, it's a company out. It's called A2 Hosting. I love okay. them. I've been with them for 15 years. Yeah, A2, A2 yeah. Hosting. And they have, they have servers here in the United States, and they have servers in Greenland. The only thing that they said that they, they couldn't do is if there was a subpoena, they would still have to honor it because they're a United States corporation. Basically, they're saying we have to do it because, you know, we're not going to get shot in the head for you. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what they. Yeah. So, yeah, they're great. If you ever need a hosting company, they're awesome. Incredible guys. Been with them, like I said, almost 15 years. What a strange freaking world. Where this. So ha- so what do you look for when you do the end of the I'm test to know to- if it's the NSA or yeah, not? Are you guys do- doing Okay. So, so you do it and you're going to get an IP, you're going to get an IP address. So then I have on my website, you, there's a thing that says network tools. So you click on that, you take that IP address, the digit number, whatever number they gave you, and you put it in there and you hit the go button and it will come back and it will tell you, like in my case, it says DOD Network Information Center. <laughs> and it gives you the address. It was funny because it gave me their phone number. So I'm calling them. Of course, no one answers. But yeah. I'm, call, I'm, I'm calling them. Oh, I get in trouble. I'm waiting for them to kick in my door because every chance I, I got uh, Alexa in that in yeah. the house, I'm all the time, man. I'm saying, you know, bombs. 
I'm like, I need some nitrate. <laughs> I'll be walking through the house yelling at that Sandy. Hey, where's those blasting caps? <laughs> how, do I, how do I do it on Samsung? You can't. Unfortunately, I don't know how to do it on Android. Yeah. I know it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> I haven't figured it out yet on Android. I'm sure there's a way. But yeah, this is an iPhone only. Oh, well. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. Gonna <laughs> iPhone only. So DOD and and where it said it said Ohio? No. Yeah, DO yeah, it gives you the whole address and everything. It's funny. And it gives you the phone number. I, like I said, I call them. I, I call them a couple times and, and of course they never answer. You always get a, a recording. That's crazy. I mean uh, IRS. That doesn't make me happy either. <laughs> but the, the, you know, I have not, you know, I've never been a rich man. I've made some good money a couple of times. Yeah. Um, but boy, do they just, every year they come after me and yeah. I just don't get it. It's constantly, you owe us more. I'm like, well, how much, you take everything already. How could yeah. I possibly owe you more? Yeah. And oh. what the heck do I owe you for? Being alive? Yeah. I don't understand, uh, I don't understand the idea at all of, uh, uh, employment tax i get st- in my head i'm like all right uh, taxes i understand the concept i get why we need them but for me a 10 percent flat rate sales tax should take care of freaking everything you, you, if you're, you're correct sir yeah if, if god and then then they take they take the rest of all the other stuff they take from us. I'm like, what? Yeah. What are you spending this money on? Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the, yeah, the, the this state of California just alone. Do you imagine how much 10 percent from everybody is is actually yeah. a daily accruing? Well, well, you live in a state. You have state income tax, right? What's your yeah. state income tax rate? Oh, oh God, I don't even know. That'd be crazy. Something ridiculous. See, Florida, we don't have state income tax. And you pay the state and then pay the feds. And yeah, pay the- we, we don't have that here in Florida. We don't have state income tax. And everybody's like, oh, your sales tax must be high. It's like, no, it's like 5%. Yeah, that should take care of everything. Yeah, we pay 5% sales tax. And we don't have state income tax or anything. And uh, it, it's, it just goes to show you how, how all the other states are ripping you off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because Florida definitely isn't going broke. No, and we have we have check this out. Our property tax, we have what they call homestead ex, 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 uh, homestead exception. So if you actually live here, if you're not a a, a snowbird, your uh, property tax is cut in half. Wow. Yeah, I mean it, it's just uh, it, and that just it, it's funny because everybody's like, well, you know, it's like, what are you what are you talking about? I mean, half of I think they said three quarter or a quarter of the people in in, in the state of Florida actually get government assistance of some sort. So it's not, I mean, we have our share of welfare here and uh, all of the social programs that go along with any state. And, but yeah, we're not, we don't pay state income tax and we only pay about 5%. You know, it depends on your county because each county will adjust it, but it's between five and 6%. And you don't pay taxes on, on certain items. And, and the p- property tax is the other thing that I've never understood. Yeah. Why, why, after you buy a home for a million dollars, do you have to then pay property tax on the f- home to, uh, I don't know. Well, it's because it, you never you, own a home in the United you never States. You really own it. No. It's you never not own years. I, yeah. And who are you paying that to? Well, it's your county. It's what pays for your county and, and all of that. And And then if you don't pay it, what do they do to you? Well, they take your home. No, a, and then they yeah. sell it. <laughs> you don't own anything in the United States. But here's a kick in the head. A lot of people, you know, the, the income tax that they come and get you for, that yeah. doesn't go. This is what's so funny. You know, I'm not a fan of Trump. Let me tell you, I'm not a fan of either of them. I, I, I'm i I'm going to, you know what, Manu, I'm writing you in for president. That's a good idea. I'm going to write you in for president. I swear to God, I am. I'm going to take, and I'll take a picture, probably get tackled for doing it. But I, I'm not, I'm not voting for any of them. And no, I mean, I'm going to vote, but I'm not going to vote for those two clowns. It's but, such a it's, it, can, can people not get the joke at this point? Yeah. They there. It's a play. It's a yeah. it's a kabuki it's theater. A, this this moron versus this moron, and yeah. those are your choices. And they're laughing at us. Yeah. 
And if we would just take our right to vote seriously and decide that, hey, we'll put some independent parties in the government, but no, we 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 follow the bouncing ball and yeah. we choose one of these idiots. Yeah. They're both morons. Yeah. I mean, they're not morons. They're both. I mean, he's a moron. She's intelligent, but she's diabolical. Yeah, she's evil. And, and, and so is he. Yeah. And uh, they're both part of the same regime of, of rich, uh, evil bastards. Yeah. And I don't want to vote for either of them either. Yeah. yeah, yeah but yeah. what were you going to say about Trump? You're going to say something. Well, I was going to say, you know, everybody criticizes Trump because he hasn't paid taxes in 10 years. I thought that that's brilliant. Fantastic. The, yeah. yeah. I mean, why is that so bad that, you know, the guy that you, so he's figured out, he figured out how to screw them with their own system. I mean, that's brilliant. That's what all rich people do. He's yeah. just going, he, you know, he's just going, hey, yeah. I, I, I just do whatever the rest. Of yeah. I bet you haven't paid your taxes either, Clinton. Yeah. Well, well, no, th- this is the thing. And then this, you know, what is so funny about she talks about, you know, how she did pay her taxes and, and everything. The, the problem is this. Where does she get her income? Yeah. From for- the taxes that she pays. So. So she yeah. really doesn't create wealth or anything for herself. She she you know, she she takes the money that she takes from us and she gives it back to her. And then the other thing too was the Clinton Foundation. They found out, you know, they were like, "Well, she doesn't she or he he hasn't done any charitable contributions." It's like, "Well, if you look at it, neither is Clinton because the two charitable contributions that she's done is the Clinton Foundation, which that money goes directly to her to her exactly. daughter or whoever." And yeah. then the other the other charitable foundation that she supposedly gives money to is, is tied to her super PAC. So at the end of the day, she basically took her two or three million dollars in charitable contributions, and then she just put it right back in her pocket indirectly. Indirectly, and, and then she's you know, yeah. and she's brilliant. It's like, oh, come on, and I Trump. I I have to say kudos, man. Good for you, Trump. You are a smart man for not you know for using their system against them. Yeah, I really liked when uh, that little documentary by the Pelosi kid where she went around and showed people the 168 families that pretty much cough up all the money for both uh, candidates throughout the – and uh, I thought that was pretty fun because you just kind of saw, oh, yeah, this is a totally crap system. You know, all these super wealthy folks are going, yeah, I I give to both. I'd like to hedge my bets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, like I, I actually think that's why Trump isn't going after as hard as he, he as as he could, because I think if he doesn't get elected, he's still going to need him for it because he's got some projects that need to get pushed through. Yeah. So that's why he's not he's not unloading her. He's not. I mean, look at what he did. You know, lying crews. You know, and he's drilling all that in there, and he, with her, he's like, you know, he he you know he talks about her, but he doesn't give her. I don't know. I don't care. It's like I said. I'm I'm writing your name in. Yeah, have you ever seen They Live? Yeah, oh yeah. It's, yeah, it's man. Freaking that, Roddy Roddy Piper. Yeah. I got to work with Roddy a, a year ago right before he passed. Yeah. It was so awesome, man. I, I and it was great great little scene in a uh, a little documentary about absinthe, but um yeah. uh, not a lot of people see it, but it was just so cool to that film to me is like the state of things uh in a nutshell, even if the aliens aren't wearing our skin, which they very well, very well might be, yeah. um, even if they're not, that's just, you know, that's we're just in this weird place where money means nothing and the prices are going up and we're all giving it to like a 200 families and the rest of us are breaking our backs trying to just keep food in our mouths. I saw a $20 apple pie the other day. <laughs> what? I saw a twenty dollar apple pie in the supermarket in a uh, Gelson's, and I, I was like, "What? That's apples and sugar? Do, what the now? What now? I gotta ask you though, because you're you're in L.A. right, and you're part of that. Yeah. Is this one of these supermarkets where they actually put the bag? I mean, like put the food in the bag for you? No, it's one of the ones where you have to bag your own, like oh, okay. super. Trendy supermarkets where they're like, Gel, it's like the, you know, it's like Whole Foods, man, oh, where, you know, whole, whole paycheck. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. You're up, you're up. Well, it was funny because well, when we lived in Chicago, I took Sandy to a, to a place that was Sunshine Market, right? They actually uh, have personal shoppers that walk around with you and you can go, oh, can I have that? And it's not like craft macaroni, it's some like French macaroni. 
And it's like, can I have, and they, they would actually pull it off the shelf and bag it for you. So I can understand $20 well, for that. But so this is like a Kroger's or a Piggly Wiggly $20. Jesus. Well, it, it's a step above Ralph's, but still $20 for an apple pie. That's insane. Dude. Yeah. That's insane. Have, yeah. And even the Ralph's are in the, the Safeways and the whatever that he's talking about, Piggly Wiggly, same, Piggly, yeah. same type of thing. The Safeway, yep. Yeah. Even those places, man. I, I spent, I think, I remember that I could go to the market just like 10, 12 years ago. Well, I'm getting old. Maybe 15 years ago. But I I could get by on 50 bucks a month for food. Oh, and easily. I, yeah. And not now, man. I mean, I, I go in there and I, I couldn't believe it, man. We just... A little bit of roommate shopping. I came out of there with like 350, 400 bucks was gone. I was like two people and a few bags of food. What's yeah. going on? No, it, it, well, I remember, you know, like bread, you, you get a, you get a loaf of bread for a buck. Now you, you're lucky if you get it under three, if it's under three bucks, a yeah. gallon of milk, a dollar 59. You were lucky. Now you're lucky if you, you know, another three. Here you go. Campbell, yeah. you know, Campbell soup. Two used bucks. To get, used to get Campbell soup for 50 cents a can. Yeah, right? quarter a can. And now, I yeah. A buck. yeah, and now you're looking at two bucks a can. Oof. You know, hot dogs. You used to get like a back of hot dogs for a buck a thing. Now you're you're five bucks. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it, it's, it's all crazy. it's all crazy. Well, here's well, one for you. I don't know if we talked about this last time you were on the air. Have you heard anything about the Mandela effect? Oh yeah, that's creepy. Hey, give me some good uh, examples though. All right, I, I, here, here you go. Here you go. I, you're gonna laugh at me. It's all right though because we're friends. You can make fun of me. Um, yeah. Sex. There was an HBO series. You're, you're, you're. Yeah, Sex you're, in the City. I what was it? it? What was it? What? Sex in the City. Sex in the City, right? Yeah. Guess and what? Now it's it? And Sex and the City. Yep, that's yeah. one. Yeah. What uh, is happening? <laughs> the other one I saw was Bernstein Bears. Yep, yep, Bernstein. Now they're the Bernstein Bears. Bernstein. The- Oscar, what was it? Oscar. Oscar Mayer. Yeah, it's Mayer now. What? Yeah, M A Y E R. What? Yeah, my baloney has a first name. Yep, that's it. The Oscar Mayer has become Oscar Mayer. It used to be M E Y. Yeah, that's right. And there, and actually, there, there's, there's actual people. See, un, unfortunately, like Sex in the City, I, you know, I didn't take pictures. I used to go to the Sex in the City parties in Chicago with a lot of my friends, and you know, we would have. I, I love that show, so I know that one. And I mean, I, I follow the Mr. Big. You know, I followed all of, them. and 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 it was funny because when someone told me, that, I was like, no, it's always been Sex in. And they're like, no, it's Sex and the City. It's like, no, it's Sex in the City researched this and at least gone to these simple ones because the creators of that show are still alive. Can we just go to them and ask them why they changed the name? They said they, they will tell you that it's always been sex and the city. No, they won't. Yep. Yep. They've done it. They've done it. And they said it's always been sex in the city. No, it hasn't. I know. Well, no, I agree with you, but that's the whole blending. That's the whole, the whole thing. Now, see, I, I, my theory is a lot of people are saying that, you know, CERN opened up an alternative universe and is bleeding over. Yeah. So that's the theory. My theory is, is that there's a, there's a organization in England called the Travistock Institute. Now it was founded by a well-known Nazi who was the guy who basically was Hitler's PR guy uh, in the, in the third Reich. And he, you know, because you always ask yourself, how does a mil- how does a, a a country of people, you know, get behind a mass murderer, and and how do they say it's okay to to slaughter gays and to slaughter, uh, you know, uh, re- retarded children? How do how do they, you know, how do you get that movement, right? How do you get people to do that? And mm-hmm. and it's these it's social engineering, you know, it's the same thing. And 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 the Travis Stock Institute out of England is known for that. That's that's what they're known for. I think they are actually testing to see how much they can manipulate uh, media or manipulate people to get them to believe what they want them to believe. And it's all that whole Orwell thought police process. You know, it's rewriting history and then seeing if people uh, go the, along with it. The one that scared me the most and. 
I feel like I'm hoping, you know, of course, you always got to hope for the best. I'm hoping that I just, I'm just not remembering it right. But I remember there being four people in Kennedy's car when Kennedy was shot. And now they're telling me that there's six. And there was a bar over the car. And there was. No. Uh, yeah, there's a bar. If you go the look at the Kennedy assassination now, there's Connolly sitting in front of him. Yeah, Connolly, you have driver, you have the president, and you have the first lady. Nope. No. Go there's look at it now. Car. Now there's six people. There's there's Connolly's Connolly's in there next to some other guy, and then there's the driver and some other guy, but Con- there's it's a six seater instead of a two seat instead of a four seater. That's the creepiest part that I because I don't remember there being six people in that car. It was yeah, I, I, I always thought it was four. You had Conley, you had the driver, you had the president, and you had the and you had okay, the first lady. If you really want to freak out? Go pull up the Kennedy assassination. I'm doing it right now, man. I'm doing and it you'll right see now. six people in that car. And I certainly do not remember there being six people in that car. And when that when that like I was I, with the Mandela effect, I was like, yeah, it's kind of funny, kind of weird. They're changing names on us. It's a little strange. Um, but when I saw that, I was like, I know there were, I mean, I've seen the, the Zapruder film. I don't know how many times, how could I not no, remember wait, the, I'm looking, the, I'm looking at the Kennedy. Oh, I texted. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at a picture, John. I just did a half dollar a coin and there's only four of them. <gasps> no. <laughs> oh shit. You just saw it. <laughs> we just blew your mind. That car, no way. Yeah, I know. You got two in the front. You got Conley, his wife. You got the president and and the first lady. That's how I remember it. Are you looking at it? Which, no, you- I'm I'm looking at the video. I don't even remember that car. No, me either. And I remember I- going. Well, wait a minute here, because I went to Washington D.C. and I went and I actually saw this car. And I don't. I, I can tell you. I ain't never seen a stretch. It, it's like, like they the, stretched, they put another two. They put Connolly yeah. where he was. Connolly was in the passenger seat, from what I remember. Yeah, where, exactly. He was in the. But this one here, the car here that they're showing him in, is you got you got two well, a driver and another That's guy in the front driving, seat. Then you got Connolly backed up a seat. Yep, and you got obviously that might be his wife, and then you got the first lady and the president. No Not, way. Is that creepy as hell? That's the one that 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 really uh made me uh yeah, I I don't I don't I mean, and my mind has been fighting itself ever since. I've been yeah. like maybe I just No. Maybe I just Because I can tell you, man, I've seen the I they have the car on display. And yeah. and we I saw the car and I can tell you the car that I'm looking at now is not the car that I saw as a kid when I went to DC. Yeah, and if if there, there's been a few videos made on the Zapruder film change, and um, they've showed the car th- that's in the museum, and it is certainly not a six seater. It's um, uh, so the Zapruder film change is that's something that freaks the hell out of me. The, well, the rest- that, well, that's that whole bleeding. And the other thing too is I, I'm looking at a picture of Conley with a cowboy hat, and then when you see him, he's not wearing a cowboy hat at all. Yeah. And I remember Connolly in the passenger seat turning yes. around and the president gets hit. And now he's not even in the passenger seat. He's like riding the middle shotgun or yeah. whatever that is. Uh, so they're insane. teaching kids. I think they're, I, think, I mean, I, from what I, I don't know, I haven't looked into this real deep. I usually look into things more than I, before I talk about them, but I, I want to go to a little high school and see if they're teaching kids. the six people in the car. Uh, history. I ask my sister. Yeah, we should ask your sister. See if she's she... ten years younger. She's twenty. So, um, all right. Well, you're on the same page as me. Then I swear there were four people in that car, yeah. and that, that that's a real big change in history from the history I remember. Yeah. And there's other folks that remember Mandela dying in prison. I, I don't remember yes. that. But of course, I was too. I was pretty young at the time, so I only remember exactly. him getting out. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't remember. That was one. I don't remember Mandela dying in prison. Yeah, me either. Um, but I guess some folks do. Uh, for me, the other, the only other thing that I could think of that that that's you know supernatural or weird is 
my whole life I've thought, well, what if time travel existed at some point in the future? Wouldn't people go back to try to like take things as their own and Google and like in that 80s and I figured, you know, I'd go back and and change Coke to 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 kike or cake or whatever. <laughs> yeah. You know? Um I guess I wouldn't change it to kike in any mean, <laughs> not the right <laughs> not the right term. Uh but you know you'll, just change You'll never do a film in LA again, man. You're done. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. You might as well go to Europe. I'll just give it up. Um, but you know, change a letter in something. And and then yeah. that kind of seems to be what's happening is like, uh, I rem I remember auditioning for sex in the city. I, I went in and auditioned for that show and I remember it clearly. Uh, I can't remember the name of the, the guy that made the show, but yeah. if I looked it up real quick, I would, but I auditioned for him and the casting director and why I remember that audition so clearly of all the other auditions in the world was I hated sex in the city because I, I thought it was so such a, such a superficial, like decadent, uh, nonsensical show. Um, and I, when I went in the, the creator of the show, just the way he looked, he was yeah. wearing a designer suit and he'd, had some plastic surgery done and everything's hair perfectly quaffed. And he was like, he was the symbol of like alien, uh, decadence, <laughs> um, and acted just like so pompous. And, and, you know, I'm the, the, the cool producer that wears pink socks and fancy shoes. Um, and I was like, Oh man, you know, I, I don't want to be a part of this. Um, I don't want to work for this guy. And it, I remember very clearly sex in the city. Yeah. And you're telling me that that guy, if I asked that guy, he would say, no, it's always been sex. In the well, city. I don't know. Maybe we need to ask him. You guys we should. Let's call him up. I'm going to, I'm going to try to figure that out. Actually. What is his name? Um, if I see his name, I'll remember it. Give me a second. Was he a writer? Was he the producer or creator? Was, was it? Can, well, creator. Candace Bushell, it looks like. So yeah, no, it was a. It was her book. It was her book, but then the yeah, guy Michael Patrick King. Mm, that doesn't sound Darren right. Star? Darren Star. Star. That's his name. Darren Star. Yeah. Uh, Darren Star. Yeah. And now the the photo that he's got up looks fine. He looks like a regular dude. Yeah. But when I came into that office that day, he was like coiffed and and uh, fully like. He looked like a you know New York elitist type. Well, that was probably after a few years, right? Yeah, and then you've yeah. got sex and the city. All these posters have been changed. Yeah. Oh, that's creepy, man. Why did it? What's going on? Ah, oh, that's messed up. <laughs> I just can't handle looking at it. It's I sex know. in the city. That that I, is not what it was. I'm on HBO Go all the time, and I scroll through their TV shows, and every time I see it, I repeat it to myself: "Sex in the city, sex in the city, yeah, sex, in sex in the city." Yeah. Yeah. So I don't forget. <laughs> yeah, no, you can't. Yeah, you can't because it's all a test, man. The minute the minute your your mind turns the mush. But see, this is the thing. I actually had Dr. Wingo on. Um, she was awesome. She she's actually in Ecuador, and, and it was funny because she she studied stress and stress responses. And what was crazy about her is that we were we we're halfway through the show, and I'm like. There's a reason why you don't live in the United States anymore, isn't there? And she's like, bingo. And and she actually escaped to Ecuador because, uh, well, the hypothesis, she didn't come out and say it, but the hypothesis is that she stumbled across something that basically they, what they do is they, they'll create stresses in your brain, like these, these kind of paradoxical statements that you can't, that your brain's like, oh, I can't figure it out. You know, this is crazy. Well, that creates um, a chemical response that makes your brain more malleable. And then when your brain's malleable, they can then interject thought and they can, they can like program you. And, mm. and so my whole theory is, is that they've created these, these, these points that make you, everybody has like a, 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 a basis of reality that they, they hold to that they're like attached to, kind of like with you. It, it's the Kennedy car right so mm -hmm. that creates a stress point in your brain when you create a stress point then that allows your your uh, cortisol levels increase 
And then that was what makes your mind malleable or mendable. And now they can then feed you full a bunch of other crap. And then you believe that too. And she did a whole theory, whole uh, I mean, her 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 whole doctoral thesis was on this whole concept. After she wrote it, she had to leave the United States because I think she basically uncovered how they're how the you know how they're manipulating us. And for me, it'd be Sex in the City because I I get I get apprehensive when I think about it. and Oscar Mayer. You don't mess with my hot dogs, man. Oscar, awesome, <laughs> you know, and, and that was her whole theory that this whole thing that they're doing. Is it what it does is it creates conflict, mental conflict. And because you have mental conflict, you have, uh, you're mendable. I thought it was great. Yeah, it's strange. It's really, you know, some people's to Bernstein bear, it's the bear. You know, to me, that doesn't matter to me. But it's, kind of, but think about it. When you look at the Kennedy car now, you probably have some real tension in your oh, head. Oh, big time. Yeah. It really messes with me. And, and my yeah. brain. And I can feel my brain battling itself, going, "Okay, maybe yep. you just don't remember it right. Maybe you're just tripping." Yeah. I'm looking at the Zapruder film. I see six people there. I must have always seen six people. I must have just been yeah. stuck on Connolly because he turns around and he gets shot, and I just never. But no, he was in the freaking passenger seat. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, it's creepy. I'm reading yeah. something about a Sex in the City lawsuit uh, for the change, but it it, it doesn't uh, it looks kind of funny. Well, yeah, actually, John John corrected me. You're right. The Henry Ford Museum at Michigan. You're correct. Yep, I went there. I went to the. That's where I saw it. Not in D.C. I saw. Uh, oh, I saw the. We toured where Abraham Lincoln, the house across the street from Abraham Lincoln, uh, was. But yeah, no, you're right. The Henry Ford Museum in Michigan. Yep, he, and then he is correct. The actual car in there. Yeah. yeah? Yeah, they have it there. Yeah, I remember going to it when they first opened up. Because I remember they had a huge steam engine when you walk in, and and it was cool. My my grandparents are big UAW people in Michigan, and so when they opened that up, do you remember? No. Do you do you remember us? What do all do you all remember us being on Orion's arm? No, John John Stucka is asking us in the, in the chat room. So, John, can you elaborate? I don't know what you're talking about, Orion's arm. Do you all remember us being on Orion's arm? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you're talking I about. Let him. Let him uh, we, we actually have some participation here in the chat room. So, so okay, let's see cool. if, he, if he kicks it in here. Ask me. John's a pretty cool dude. Orion's arm. Orion's arm. I, I can only think of the constellation. So. Yeah. Well, no, let him. Yeah, he's, he'll, he'll probably ex- expand. I, I know him well oh. enough to know that he'll. Yeah, he's we've we've had some deep conversations. So, so throw that, yeah, the Mandela effect is crazy. So, how do you know? Were you on Deep Space Nine, man? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have we have Manu and Arami from Deep Space Nine. That was uh, that Star Wars. Was, uh, <laughs> you were know that that would be a real mind mind blower I, for it, you, it right? On, I was on Star Hike. You were on Star know. Hike. <laughs> That's right. <Yeah. laughs> and you. And and you and you and you played uh, <laughs> a show called Universe Walk. Universe Walk. That's funny. That yeah. that would be now. See when they start changing your career, that's when you know you're really like messed up. Yeah. Well, I I was kind of hoping, honestly, that was my big hope. I thought, wow, maybe you're getting on this big uh, Paramount franchise that is about spaceships. Maybe you're getting into the club. Yeah. Nothing. No. I got nothing. I, I guess yeah. maybe I was, you know, no, no, not even an offer, not even a like, hey, you've been on the show for a couple of years. Uh, maybe you want to come join the CIA and kill people? No, none, none of it. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about the Star Trek reboot? Uh, you know, I'm a, I like them. I, I think yeah. they're great films. I think they're fun. They're not, they're not Roddenberry films. They're no. not, they're, they're not, uh, cerebral and, and they're not, um, they don't have that same power to make you think and they're not metaphorical and they're, they're action films. Yeah. Um, action adventure. Films. Yeah, they're, I, yeah. I've enjoyed all three of them. I, I, sir, I love them. They're great. They're great fun. Yeah. But they're not the Star Trek that I remember, uh, that I, they're fun for a different reason. They're fun because they're, they're spectacle movies like Star Wars. Yeah. Yeah. They're, uh, 
it's basically Star Wars with Starfleet uniforms. Um, oh, yeah. And you've got these characters that you know and love, and so that keeps you hooked with the, you know, they they certainly have, uh, you know, Spock and Bones and and uh, Kirk down, um, and that keeps it fun. But I, I really I do wish they would get a little more cerebral, and it, it doesn't look like they're going they're going to. See the problem that I have, I, I the problem I have with Star Trek and the whole series is that the Bad no matter problem. how no matter how they do it, the technology in today's series is so far advanced. You know the the, the Star Trek, the Gene Roddenberry Star Trek, is actually in the future, correct? Than yeah. most of the ones that are that were have been like the series that have been shot now, and so they're so far. You know, the, it was always like. Uh, uh, you know, it was like, well, what happened? Why did we step back in technology? And I know that they did what they did with what they had, right? But they could have pulled it off a little bit better. It's kind of like Doctor Who ish. You know, it's, it, I, I don't know. And, yeah, and it, the, well, there's bad science. In the Roddenberry uh, Trek, they had, they, they talked to, they had a lot of physicists and uh, they really took their, um, the way the ship worked and the laws of space and all they took that stuff into account as good as they could and tried to even their fictional science was really well thought out and there were whole departments looking after like how would this work how would that work and the new ones don't have anybody like that on board from from, uh, from what i've heard um yeah, so it's awesome. you know there, there were all these guys back in the day that that their job was to, you know, check the science and, and come up with the real words that they would be using and uh, talk to the leading people in their fields about what might be down the road. And um, that doesn't seem to be happening in these new films. Yeah. But I love them. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not one of these like diehard purists. That's like, Oh, they totally screwed up Star Trek. I, I've enjoyed every film I've watched. I've just enjoyed it for a different reason. It was a, a roller coaster ride, and it was fun, and it, and but, funny, and funny. Yeah, I mean, I laugh too. But I, I do prefer the. I think it's sad. Uh, I hope that the new series uh, with Brian Fuller writing for it. Um, he wrote for Deep Space Nine and Voyager, and um, he knew, he he spoke. He speaks to the Roddenberry ethic of making stuff. Because st for me, Star Trek was always a sneaky way to talk about metaphors that count and talk about what's going on in society without yeah. uh, without uh, in, without getting in trouble for it. And um, I hope that the new series does that because there's a lot of things right oh. now that need, need to be addressed. And I'm really hoping that the new TV series stays along those lines and doesn't just turn into a another action another thing. yeah another try to you know they, i actually think now they just look at the merchandising and say all right what can we do to make to sell more whatever yeah and, and so yeah i mean star trek i mean it was cutting edge i remember watching you know when, when captain kirk uh kissed her hair that was the actually i didn't know this but they were saying that that was the first on the, uh, interracial on-screen on kiss yeah you know on and tv which is that you know I, I always thought it was uh uh, look who's coming to dinner with uh, uh, Portier. Oh, with Portier. Yeah. Well, did they kiss in that? I always thought they did. There you go, Mandela effect. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I thought they did. I thought that was what the. I mean, it, obviously, it, it was you know think, at the, the time, I but think, I thought they did. I think they mean on uh, on television. Yeah, uh, and that was in prime film. time. In prime time. Yeah, in prime time television. I think is uh, the Star Trek kiss. I think the the film. Uh, yeah, in the theaters, but I, on prime time, yeah, w w when everybody's sitting around, that was the first generation. Yeah. So, by the way, John is actually talking, he is talking about uh, many people with the Medell effect remember us being on the arm of Sagittarius, where now we are on Orion Spur, which is where we, our position in the galaxy. And, our and I, I don't know, I mean, I, I never got that deep, I just know my hot dogs and my sex in the city. And now my John F. Kennedy car. In a second, if our we used to be off the edge of the arm, and yeah. now we're not. now we're not now we're well we're in Orion Spur. If you if you I googled um, Sagittarius uh, I arm of Sagittarius Medela effect, uh -huh. and it came up with a video with Carl Sagan, and that's what it is. So it's our actual position. I never. 
Is Carl Sagan saying that we're off of? I, I don't. I haven't watched it. It's just that that's what I'm reading. And so it's literally our apparently our position in the solar system changed. Dude, but yeah, it's it's all. Well, yeah, I just figured it's time travelers. If it's just names of things changing, people are going back in time and screwing with stuff. And that could be it. Like that, hot tub time machine. I mean that <laughs> that makes sense to me. You know, you you yeah. you'd go. Oh, I want to own Oscar Mayer, so I'll go kill the guy and I'll put Mayer Oscar on Mayer on there. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll I'll get my family a bunch of money and um and that you know that all made sense to me but then it's, it's wow I mean yeah it, it could be time travelers so I, yeah I can mess with you and and everybody I want to let you guys know we're talking with Manu Itarami the uh, creator of Facebook yeah that's me <laughs> there, you, there you go <laughs> here we go start messing with you Zuckerberg's not gonna like that though oh I just let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> I wonder if you like make someone think that they, I, I think if you could see, these are things that I wish I knew when I was in college because when my friends were tripping and stuff, I just keep putting that stuff in their head. It's like, dude, why are you here? You own like Microsoft. Why are you here? Why are you here, man? <laughs> you know, and just keep putting that in people's heads. Hey man, what's happening? Happening, man. What's, yep. hey, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> Uh, oh, now you just f- fried my brain uh, talking about uh, I had something to say. Dang it. Oh, well. <laughs> Lost it. Mandela effect. They're erasing my brain as I speak. That's it. I got to, you know, one of these things I got to come to LA. We just get a bunch of people sit around a table and just uh, drink and, and have these conversations. Just, just like put microphones on the table. Have you have you heard about these uh, towers? What are they called? You must know this. These towers that are around that that have these high voltage power to zap people, and they're everywhere. They look like little trees, and they're they call them. Uh, I don't. Uh, I've seen the cellular towers where they 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 make them look like trees. Cell phone towers. Yeah, they're cell phone towers, but yeah. they really have the the juice that these things carry. Oh, oh uh, yeah. Severely fry you if they wanted to. Yeah, yeah. The microwave. I mean, I made the mistake years ago walking in front of a microwave dish while it was hot, and it, it, it it's not pleasant. It's like sticking yeah. your head in a microwave oven. Just about ten times more powerful, though. But I, I forget what these things are. But the and I forget what they're called. And of course I do because I I was I should. That's what they're trying to make us do. Forget everything. Um, but my buddy, ex military guy is telling me that they're putting these things up. They don't need all that power. There's no reason for it to be there. Yeah. And they're just really there to zap us all and keep us kind of dumb because they want to keep. And I feel like that. I feel like in the last 10 years, I've lost my ability to focus. Mm-hmm. I've lost my ability to, to keep on one train of thought, to, to, to multitask. To I've lost my vocabulary. I- I'm always searching for words and searching for I feel like something has dumbed down my whole uh, the brain. Yeah, I, I can tell you what I can tell you what one of them is, and you're going to get rid of it next week or in two weeks. It's called the TV. I can tell you since I since I started doing this show here because this occupies a lot of my my free time, so I don't have the time that I used to sit in front of the idiot box, and I have noticed that my cognitive ability has has increased. Tremendously, it's back up to where it was uh, years ago, and, and it's because I I, th- I honestly think that when images are presented to you over and over and over again, it, it it shuts down certain certain abilities, certain abilities of reason, because you don't have to figure anything out because it's all presented to you. So you know, like a good mystery where you used to have to figure, like a good Agatha Christie uh, Christie novel. Where you would you would have to figure something out. Now, if you wait long enough, it's just going to be given to you, and so you don't you don't like try to figure things out. And I think, like I said, since I have unplugged, uh, I watch my documentaries and I love them. But since I've unplugged from the idiot tube, or the, as my grandmother used to say, I can tell you my cognitive ability things that used to drive me nuts, where I couldn't remember things, I can remember them now. It's, yeah, okay. I'm just telling you, but see, I box. Yeah, I'm sure that, that all these things are irradiating us. But, yeah, I wish I could think of the name of those towers. See, I couldn't remember. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the Googler. 
<laughs> but um, so, you know, I got to ask, I mean, that's actually a good question. When you do scripts for movies and stuff, how, how much of the script do you actually memorize? Oh, all of it. I, I don't have a much of a problem memorizing lines. Uh, you have done it so much. I mean, you give me a page or two or three pages and, and I run it a few times. I can, I can go shoot it. Oh, really? uh, yeah. It's almost automatic. It's weird. It's like that. It's, it's, it's kind of like riding a bike in, in the sense that if you don't shoot something for a month or, or two or three, you get a little bit out of, out of sync. But as soon as you get to a set, and where you're shooting like seven or nine pages a day, say you're shooting an indie film, and and you've you've only got hired four days before, so you haven't had time to to memorize the whole script. Um, it just sort of comes to you after that first day. You get in a groove, and you can look at the page, and it, the brain just kind of snaps on. And uh, when you've done as much work as I have. <laughs> <laughs> you just it's yeah I'm, I'm pretty good at the memorizing the lines but what is what is wild is that as soon as you leave set uh you forget it all you know it's gone it's not like it stays with you um yeah. you know, people will say oh you know say the line from that movie and i'll be like i don't remember any lines from that movie do you ever do you ever find yourself have you ever found yourself going home in character or do you pretty much detach from it it depends on the character. Uh, uh, you know, I've, if you're playing a role that's, that's really, he's gone through some mental anguish that day, uh, on set, whether some really heavy stuff, it's hard to put that aside because for me, if you're going to play a scene, uh, I was just watching a scene today where it was, uh, a couple of actors really working really hard yelling at each other fully angry and uh, heavy stuff that they were talking about you if you force yourself to go there then you've won you've done some great acting because you've convinced yourself that the scene is real um but you can't just turn that emotion off because it's like it's like when you get super pissed and you punch a hole in the door or something you're not just gonna like Oh, scene's over. Yeah. Okay, back to being me. <laughs> I, uh, want my, I want my Moto lo, Moco Lockley or whatever they call it. I'd like, I'd like my, I'd my, were you trying to say a, a latte? Latte, yeah. yeah. I'm having a hard time. I told you, man. I, I was having a hard time speaking to that. I think it's a, it's the hurricane. It yeah. drains me. When we have these atmospheric uh, events, I, it, I can feel yeah. it well. I can feel the heaviness, the woefulness. Yeah, and there's a lot of electricity in the air, and your brain yeah. is electric. So it's, yeah, yeah it, it, when you're talking about the, the cell towers. Yeah, they're saying that I, this is crazy. Cell towers, elect, uh, electromagnetic field, EMF safety, and, and safe spaces. They're saying that the microwave, and I know my, 45 miles. <laughs> so if you're within 45 miles of it, you know, you have to worry about EMF saturation. Yeah, trying yet. That it's is crazy. Fine. And so we're just walking around getting zapped by those things and they can put, they can turn it up, turn it down. Well, you put yeah. them right next to your head every time you, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm a speakerphone guy. Yeah, me too. But you know, what's the difference? Yeah. Well, the well, then you put it in your pant pocket, right? Yeah. Right. But right next to your, right family. next to your, yeah, your family, <laughs> your potential family. Yeah. yeah. And you wonder why, you know, uh, these, this, uh, these guys wow. st- Bob's died of cancer hanging around computers and cell phones yeah. all day. Well, yeah, because the radio, I remember the old CRT screens, the amount of radiation that came off those screens. I have to wear, and I don't, and I should wear them, but my panels that I have actually have are adjusted for it. But I, I have yellow glasses that I'm supposed to be wearing because my eyes are shot from staring at computer screens all my life. And, and I went out and spent some big bucks on these monitors that I use now, which have the filters already in them. And uh, they, it cuts the the electromagnetic the the radiation off them. But they're saying new study links over seven thousand cancer deaths to cell phone towers. Yeah, and it's got to be more than that. That it's is insane. Well, yeah, I mean that's yeah. I mean, well, th- th- that is that's insane. That is that's I have to do some more research on that. But of uh, course, you got it. You know, the government's not going to say anything bad against cell phones because that 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 replaced the cigarette tax wise. I mean, look at your cell phone bill. Every cell phone bill, you're looking at twenty to anywhere from fifteen to twenty bucks in taxes to the federal government or to some government agency. Oh, man. 
I don't mean to depress you even more. <laughs> that was um, not my intention. Yeah. I actually wake up every day wondering, uh, you know, I'm always surprised that the, everything isn't just on fire. Yeah. I wake up, I'm like, hey, it's still somehow, hap- still yeah, somehow we're functioning. Very we're still strange. here, yeah, yeah. Very strange. Yeah, no, yeah. it's, I, I, you know, I, I, swear I, I, I think we're heading that way, though. I, yeah. I actually think that one day, oh, I'm yeah. hoping I don't wake up. I, You know, when the meteorite hits, I want to be right under it. I'm going to be right under it with my baseball glove. I'm gonna you know, catch I, it. Want, I don't want to. I don't want to live in a post-apocalyptic world. I'm sorry, I have no desire. If if it if a you know a nuclear explosion or a meteorite type of explosion, I want to be at a vantage point where I can see it for a couple of seconds, appreciate the just wow, that was a big, and then have the <laughs> you know like look at that, it's coming, and I'm gonna be a shadow. Wham, and then well, yeah, it. be done. Uh, yeah, see, I'm, I, and then you'll be like, why is Jeff under that thing with a baseball glove? He can't catch that. <laughs> so funny. So funny. I got it. <laughs> yeah, I got it. I got it. I'm, wave, I'm waving off. Mine. <laughs> That's right. Waving them off. It's all mine. It's all mine. I got it, man. I got to take care. I just, oh my gosh. I got it. I got every once in a while, I got to announce your name because people are coming on and they're like, who the heck is this guy? So we're, yeah, guys, and we haven't taken a break. I don't know if you noticed this, but I just, when I talk to you, man, I just blow through the breaks. I don't care. Advertising, who cares? Yeah. You know, but uh, we're talking with Manu Inarami yeah. of Star Trek fame and the circuit. I, I want to get rid of the Star Trek fame. I'm going to say of the circuit. He's with yeah. the circuit. He, no. I, he's known as Icheb from Star Trek Voyager Ichab. and Star Trek Renegades, but I've been producing films. I've got a, a movie called Fifth Passenger, and right now we have a movie up on uh, the website, up on Face on Kickstarter, it's sure. called The Circuit, which is a fan collaboration project uh, where we're teaming up people from Spider Man Two, Iron Man, Game of Thrones, uh, a bunch of great actors from across the fantasy sci fi realm. Go check it out at thecircuitfilm.com. We need people to start pledging, and we're going to bring on hundreds of fans to collaborate and work on this project uh, for every episode that we fund through Kickstarter. We've got a ton of videos up there. Everybody go check them out. And if you like the concept, share it. We're going to do something new, innovative, dark, fun. Uh, Ten different genres that all happen over the weekend of one mega pop culture event. Uh, sort of the new Twilight Zone. So everybody check it out. Sure. That's that's who we're talking There you go. To. Hey, man, I got to ask. King of Queens? I just saw this in your bio. I can't believe I let this one go by. Yeah, I worked on King of Queens. What did you do? Who are you? I was on one episode of King of Queens and I played, uh, Jerry Stiller was, had opened a pretzel shop in, yeah. uh, and he was, I was like this, uh, punk customer that was getting him for free pretzels because he, he had like, you know, did, was doing the system of like buy 10 pretzels, get one free, but yeah. he wasn't doing the, the punch holes. So he left it up to us to just write X's. <laughs> So I just kept coming back for free pretzels, and about the fourth time I came back, he was like, "Hey, I, what's going on here?" Uh, um, so it was just a funny little, you know, uh, one week on the show because that show is a live show, so you rehearse the first three or four days, and then um, shoot live on the on the on the Friday oh, to get. The or was it? I didn't know. I didn't know it was live. Yeah, they do uh, four days of rehearsal, and then they bring in the live audience. A lot of those sitcoms are like that, and yeah. then they shoot it live for the live laughter, and anything that they don't get a big laugh on, they pump up the laughter. And uh, it was fun working with with Stiller. He was really he was fun. Oh yeah, he he's just I mean that guy was hilarious. He's bonkers, man, and 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 that was what was fun about him is he was just a little de- delusional and and uh, couldn't remember his lines and and would say him different every time and it was funny he was just he was a classy guy too because he was really cool about i was auditioning for another film at the time called road trip yeah Uh, and i had a scene with an old man in that film that i I didn't get the part but jerry was cool enough to sit down and uh read some lines with me and try to help my performance and he didn't have to do that so really really cool person yeah he's pretty cool i mean yeah well ben just announced, you know, his PSA, I guess, saved his life. I was wondering what happened to him because he kind of fell off the yeah. earth. And then uh, come to find out, I guess he was on Howard Stern, and he announced, you know, that he was battling pos- prostate cancer. Yeah. Yeah, so that was, yeah. I, 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 that's our San, that's our show that Sandy and I watch together is uh, is Fancy. King of Queens. Yeah. So That was a good show. 
Oh, Liam. that was hilarious. That, that's <laughs> us. That's Sandy and I. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's us. I'm, I'm, you know, there, there was a scene. It was funny. We were watching a scene the other night uh, where she puts food down, and, and then of course, he he steals her food while she walks away, and then she comes and he goes, I'm a bad man. And that happens all the time. <laughs> She's like, but we were watching that. But yeah, that was one of our, one of our, one of, our, well, it is one of our favorite ones that we watch together. And, uh, wow. Yeah, I'm looking at your, yeah, I got to read these things that you guys send me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I read the first paragraph, but, I, you know, come on. You, know, it's, you had me at Star Trek. Yeah. As, they would, as they would say, but you've done a, you've got a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, history here. Yeah, yeah, I did some stuff, and it, the the last couple of years we've got some good movies. Uh, yeah. I produced uh, Benjamin Troubles it was my first film that I, I co exec produced, and uh, that was six years ago. We finally got it sold. It's coming out next month in L.A. Uh, Fifth Passenger, the fans put up some money behind, and then I was able to. From that, from a from a hundred thousand dollar on the crowdfunder, we were able to make a half a million dollar movie, um, and that'll be out early next year. Fifth Passenger, and right now we're working on the circuit. So, uh, well, and then the, well, the one that you did on the absence with uh, with oh, Roddy. Yeah, yeah. When's that coming out? That should be out pretty soon, right? No, be out soon too. I, I think he's probably going to sell it to. Uh, I'm guessing that's going to end up on. Um, uh, on one of the TV channels coming up here, maybe uh, Netflix. Um, Unbelievable is coming out. I got a bunch of stuff coming out. Uh, yeah, as I say, you, I, I'm, I'm looking. You got, well, you know what you got, but I'll, I'll read it off to the, to the audience. So you got literally right before Aaron. That's in yep. post. The Circuit, which is in pre, which we've been talking about. Tales of the Green Fairy, which is going to be awesome because I love the Green Fairy. Uh, the Dark Zone. <laughs> You know, it's not a the, the Green Fairy is sort of uh, it's just it, it, oh you like documentaries too so yeah I love it. documentaries yeah it's yeah. the history yeah that's gonna be cool it's just got some nice scenes of historical scenes that they yeah. put in there the Dark Zone I have this is a new one the Dark Zone is uh they're looking for money they're looking to raise money a cave uh um like what's it called thriller a bank robbery kind of um, film. Um, where they're they're in pre production and they're still looking to finance uh, it. Hmm. And of course, fifth passenger. I can't wait for that one to come out. That seems pretty interesting. Was fifth that passenger. fun to shoot? Yeah, the fifth passenger. Yeah, we had a great time shooting that, and um, pretty proud of the work that we did. Uh, I think people will be blown away by how it looks for the the money that we had to spend. Um, yeah, I'm really proud of the work we did. Well, that's I because you had good. I mean, you had actor. You know, that's the one thing I don't like about Hollywood these days is all the CGI crap. Yeah, we tried to. You know, we 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 tried to stay away from CGI, especially on the stuff inside the ship. We were trying to do practical effects for all the because it's a it's a thriller and it's, a, it's sort of a genre bending thriller horror film in space, um, and so all the all the stuff that involved blood or aliens or anything, we tried to keep practical because I love seeing something on the camera that isn't a uh, computer. Yeah. Generally. yeah um, I'm not a fan of, of the CGI. Yeah. I am. I'm a fan of it when it's done right, but it's so rarely done right. Good CGI to me is always used uh, to enhance practical stuff. Like you get something on the screen that, that, is amazing, and then you just use the the CG to, to enhance it. Uh, Check up season two on July thirteenth. Oh, sorry. I'm I'm looking at your I'm looking at your at your INDB. I hate when they do that. They freaking put video up there. Yeah. I saw twenty four where it said twenty four co star. I was like, when were you with Jack Bauer? <laughs> yeah, Jack Bauer season I think season two episode one. A uh, very short scene where he pulls up in his car. And and the, my IMDb has it wrong. Um, I show it to you, man. Mandela effect. Um, he pulls up in his car, and I'm like, uh, I go wash his windows for some drug money, and then he gives me some. Uh, he feels bad for Game me. Game of Thrones season junkie. six is here yeah. with new and returning characters that are equally hard to pronounce. But fear not. It's actually in my reel. That scene. Is this you? That's playing audio. No. Hey, gal. Hey, gal. No way. Someone is wait wait. 
Not there, me. There's audio bleeding through my. I, is that? I was wondering if that was you. Oh, that's not me. Oh, it is me. It was him. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. I was like, wait, where's that audio coming from? It's like, yeah, wait, wait, wait. I jumped in. So it was you. Stop that. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it was fine. I was, it, I was. I'm sitting here freaking out because I do that. You know, when you guys are telling me stuff, I go, I, you know, go look it up. That's and I've happened. had it happen a couple times, and I'm like, I, I, you know, I'm turning off stuff. I'm clicking, I'm clicking screens because it is rude because I don't want people as you're talking to me for you to think that, oh, I, you know, oh this is, oh, and I'm out <laughs> surfing the web. Um, I look at Darren Starr to see if he'd said anything about changing the title of Sex in the City. I can't find anything, and it was on his site. The yeah. audio. We got to call it. Let's, let's, let's hunt him down. Yeah. Hunt him down. Ask him. Say, look, what's up with this? What's up with this? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. You can tell us. We're <laughs> I'll, I'll, I've got one of my Illuminati buddies uh, who comes on the show, and this guy is actually Illumina. He he is he's in the club, my friend. He's he's head of the Roman Masonic Lodge there oh. in in Italy, and uh, and I'll have him call him and say, "Hey, look, you know, th- this was not sanctioned by us. You need to switch it back." <laughs> Are you uh, in the uh, the? The club? Can I get an invitation? I, I was thinking about joining the Masons. All you have to do, you, there's no invitation. You just go go to a lodge and ask them to join. Okay, because I, I I think they're all right. I, I mean, I'm not sure, but I feel like I feel like the the folks that I've talked to that have been yeah uh, in that club seem to. You'll find that most blue lodges. Now, you know, I got I to gotta tell your, your girlfriend there to close her ear. Most blue lodges are, are nothing for guys. Basically, what it is is guys that get together, smoke cigars, drink a little bit, and uh, a little fun. It's a fraternity. Yeah. Um, now, I, I, I will tell you, I, I will tell you, they, they have been infiltrated by the Jesuits and the Roman Catholic Church, and that's where it becomes dangerous. And that's where, where my friend uh, Agami, that's one of his – you know his fights as the grand master there of the, of the Italian lodge is is that he's trying to keep the Jesuits out because that's when it gets new world orderish because he's like you know the 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 Masonic lodge is a Christian lodge and you know this thing of all accepting or whatever what you know it, it great we had an awesome conversation. you got to go back and look. I know you're a busy guy and I know you don't I, you're not going to break my heart. And you're not going to, you know, upset me if I know you. Don't. But you got to go back and listen to that show because we talk about, you know, things in the lodge. And he actually says things on the air. I got him to to say things on the air that he's never admitted to. Where he he just unloads on the Jesuits. And normally, you know, that's not something that is said. But he just he just called it out for what it was. He just unloaded all all over the Catholic church and the jesuits on that show because i got him to to admit to it so oh. yeah, great show great show but he is an illuminati his family if you look at his pedigree i mean they go all the way to royalty and um yeah that was a, that was a really cool cool show but uh yeah just go to a lodge and ask to say hey look i want to join yeah dude. Nice. that's that's the secret I, I just gave you the secret I've been talking about it forever. I actually got a couple of invites and then I didn't follow up on them. But well, I if mean, they invite you, you got to be skeptical because you're not supposed. Actually, in a lodge, you're not supposed to invite anybody. What I mean is, I, I met some guys and, okay. then, and then and then I asked them, "Hey, can I?" And they said, "Yeah, you asked the right question. Why don't you?" Cool. Come that, down? That's exactly the question. That's right. You, you, yeah, you're not. If a lodge asks you, I would. It's one of those things. Where, I'm not saying that they don't do it. But they're not following the traditions. You, you as a as a person who wants to become a mason, all you got to do is ask. That's yeah. all you got to do is ask. No, that's not for ladies. It's a men's club. Like yeah, party. it's a it's a you have the Eastern Star or whatever they call it. I don't know what it is. Yeah. You got your you got your own chick club. Yeah, You're it's called to- the Eastern Star, but that's but it's look, it's just a fraternity. It's just a bunch of guys getting together. now. Of course, you get into some of the the crazy stuff, which you know what we talk about. But but like I said, that's not a true Masonic lodge. They're stepping outside of the actual nature of the lodge, and uh, yeah, it's been overrun by by uh, uh, the Jesuits for all practical purposes. That's where that's where it gets really New World ordish, and where they they try to use the power and the influence 
of the lodge and its members to That's to facilitate fun. change that they want to see. So. Yeah. Well, I, and I, that's a bummer, but I figured, uh, also that besides it being a fraternity that, yeah, these, but these guys got your back if, if they can get you work and you can get them work and stuff like that. Hey, I mean, it's like anything else. I mean, you develop, it's an opportunity to develop friendships that were never there. Right. Or, it, and it's, yeah, I mean, there is a loyalty there. I mean, we definitely, we, you know, you're definitely loyal to your, it's a fraternity. It's, it's a grown man's fraternity. So. You, were you ever in a college fraternity? No, I didn't ever do the frat thing. I didn't. I didn't pledge them because I was too drink, busy drinking them with all of them. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would hit at Pikes, SAE. I'd hit them all. I was like, I remember when I was in college, they wanted me because at that time I was running a bar, uh, and and managing a bar. So of course they wanted me to the pledge, and and I was like, why pledge? It's like why why would I pledge? I can go to all your parties. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah I never. Never pledged. Thank God. <laughs> nah, I don't, there's nothing wrong with. I mean, there's nothing wrong with people getting together and having a good time. Uh-uh. Yeah, but see, I would have been the guy who's Animal House all the way. I, I, I've been shooting for for Animal House. I've never seen. You never. Oh, come on! You've never uh, no, you have never seen Animal House. Sorry. Yeah. No. You got to do it. Oh my lord. And I was a sorority girl for six months before I realized they were all crazy bitches and quit. Yeah, that's usually how it works. <laughs> Honey, you, you've never quit the sorority. Don't you know that? Oh, I you, did. No, no, no. no. You think you did. They had, no, they had us all dressed in white like we were going to a sacrifice. Yeah. Carrying candles across campus just to join on our final night. Yeah. yeah. And you didn't do it? <laughs> didn't participate? Uh, no. I quit that night. You didn't ride the goat? to hang out down there with the uh, Scientologists for a little while, too. I- ah, there you go. Talk about uh, King of Queens. How about Raimi? She's, uh, I guess she's got a, a documentary in the works where she's going to be slamming the science. That's going to be career-ending. Uh, uh, Leah Romini? Yeah. yeah she turned her back on the Celebrity she, Center. She, oh. Yeah, she was a huge Scientologist, but she's done. No one will talk to her. Her whole family di- yep. disowned Oh, wow. It's bad. Yeah. The only reason I know is because I snuck in with a friend for a weekend, and they treated me like royalty at the Celebrity Center. Oh, I they just, really tried to sell me on joining. Yeah. I just wanted to be Tom Cruise. Like, <laughs> and I have a couple of friends that that are Scientologists that are always trying to get me to go down there. But yeah. I, I went down there a few times, and it was still just. It's not. I caught a few. Center. I caught a few too many weird vibes from the place and the people. You, you know yeah. any. Anything that it's kind of like skull and bones, you know, when you got to lay in a coffin and you got, you know, bare naked and then you got to tell your deepest, darkest secrets. Yeah. There's, there could be nothing good of that. I just come on the air and tell them anyways on the air. I don't care. Cause (laughs) that way you can't hold me. You can't hold hot. You can't hold me hostage. Yeah. I think skull and bones. I joined that club. That's what I'm saying. I joined the dark club. You would do it. I can see you. (laughs) 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 I'm in. Yeah, uh, you, well, yeah. first, first you got, but first you got to go to the, you got to go to Yale, <laughs> and that, yeah, you got to go to Yale. And I also think that you got to, you got to sacrifice somebody you love, and then I don't think I would go that yeah. far. Yeah, well, you get, you get tapped. I, I mean, you could probably, you know what, with your background, I, your, your background, you might be tapped. You might get yeah, tapped. I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope. So. Yeah, it's, just stay with the Masons, man. It's so it's just a bunch of guys getting together drinking. Smoking cigars, talking about their wives and girlfriends. Just for a ride on the, the all the secret stuff, to me, would be like, especially if they've got a ship. And I think they do. I mean, thinking that this the space shuttle's the best we have after yeah. 50 years, uh, SR-71, that thing could almost leave space. Well, uh, if you're going to space, you got to do Scientology then. I mean, the, they have the whole space lab right there, or the whole space state. The, the, what, somewhere in California, didn't they build some... Space thing? I I don't it's know. For Zenu to come here. Oh, that's for the yeah. For, you, for you're the scaring me. You wait. You know way too much about Scientology. <laughs> <laughs> that's because I had an ex who was one who tried, uh, and I dated him for three weeks uh, he took every day. Tried to convert me, and I was out. I did was he like, Did he hook you up to the meter? Did he like on the e meter? The e meter. They tried that, and I go, "This is the stupidest thing ever. It's just an electromagnetic current." Yeah, it's actually pretty creepy. Yeah, 
It's, yeah. Are you stressed right now about your mother having a heart attack? Yes. And it shoots up? Jesus, yes. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Let's ask yeah. some really stupid yeah. questions. I don't quite need a, I don't need a meter to tell me I'm stressed about something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But no, she's coming out. I mean, she's, she's apparently she's got a documentary that's coming out or uh, a reality where she's talking about how she has been disassociated from from scientology and you know i watched that hbo special that whole what hour long or whatever that's Pretty some good. crazy stuff man yeah that was like the, uh, and that's for the yeah and the, yeah I'm, and these are intelligent know. people that's what's concerning it just goes to show you how you can just be mind melted oh it's not hard to it is not hard to manipulate blackmail and uh purge somebody's yeah. uh, uh yep. what is it called um Oh, for the lack of a, oh, why can't I come up with the word? Uh, brainwash. It's brainwash. not hard to brainwash people, yeah. especially because one of the first things they put you through is like a, a four week like detox of every bad thing that's ever been in your body, and they make yeah. you like take niacin and sit in hot hot saunas all and day. And so, if you've ever drank or smoked or done acid or done anything, that that stuff's going to purge out of your body, and you're going to be in one of the weakest states of mind you've ever been in. And at the same time, they're pumping your head full of what they want you to think. So, not hard to do that. We, well, you know, we're not too far from Ocala, which you know that has, you know, he was the celebrity poster boy until I, I think John Travolta kind of pushed back, and now you got Tom Cruise. Yeah. And Cruz is terrified of the world knowing he's gay. So yeah. he'll, John he Travolta. Be- I mean, that was the best thing. You know, they have that picture of John. But, you know, he, I don't want. I'm not a rumor mongrel, but you know, you hear enough of it. But I'm I'm so happy that they released that picture of John kissing his his boyfriend or whatever it was. I think it freed him. I I really do because it's like, oh, I'm out. Oh, I don't have to deal with this anymore. Yeah, I mean, thank. I don't like. I said I don't care, man. Who cares? No. But it seems like Tom is really concerned because I think, in a way, it might hurt his career with all the dudes that watch his stuff. And yeah. I think, and yeah, I think also he's just—he's it's something he's hid for fifty years. He's probably yeah. really, yeah. really up about it. Because yeah, un- unfortunately, because it would be great if that guy came out about uh, well, not only that, but also like you know, came out about all the bull crap that Scientology yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, it's bunk when they, you are now the super commander, whatever, whatever, and here's your white hat. You know, they yeah. created. Yeah. I watched that series where they like create. They're creating awards for Tom Cruise, and he's yeah. all excited. He's like, "Oh, this is the best yeah. thing." This is. But the only thing that I really do appreciate about the Scientologists and about L. Ron Hubbard, I think it's badass that he was able to win the battle against the federal government, oh, yeah. create his own religion, not pay taxes on it. And the only really, the, really the only thing he does is, is the, the, the organization operates a, it's basically like being a, sh- having a shrink except it's a whole college of shrinks and they're and they're shrinks. not very good shrinks yeah. because they're not they're not uh they're there to take your they haven't care. been you know uh, through school yeah yeah so but but you know he basically is doing his own version of therapy and and then calling it a religion yeah. and pulled it off that's it's the only way yeah well I, that's, yeah i mean it, I, yeah it's basically look how can i not pay taxes I'm, I'm yeah. tired of living on this boat. I got to go back to the country. I got to yeah. go back because I can't sail on the ocean as a, as a uh, as a fugitive. So I got to create something. And oh yeah, oh religion. <laughs> yeah, he pulled it off. I mean, I'd love to have my own church. That'd be awesome. You could have. You probably church. could, man. I'm sure I'd you probably got some pretty crazy fans. Well, if I start preaching for a few years, and maybe I, I could pull it off. That. Well, of course it'd be a, of course it'd be a cult. As long as I get the church status, I don't care what. Yeah, that's right. The, the you already got the name for it. I mean, come on. Yeah, you I know, am the you're, god you're the god of law and the god of sun. I just start telling people that I really am. His dad messed that up. Yeah, my dad did blow it, man. I had the Buddha birth and everything going on. You know, Buddha was born. Uh, a couple of these gods in in history supposedly were born in their their amniotic sac. Yeah. And my stupid hippie dad, he, I love him. He's not dumb. But at the time, 
I was coming out in that thing and he, he named me a God. And then he was like, what is it? And he started poking at it and he popped it and he ruined the whole thing. Oh man. Yeah. You could, you could be like wearing a, a, a red robe hiding from China right now. Dude, I could be walking around levitating, and instead he popped a sack. So I'm just an American actor guy wandering yeah. around, just wandering around. Did a couple couple films. Yeah, yeah, no big deal. And uh, you know, Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. That's right. That's Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you on Battlestar Galactica? I thought you were Battlestar Galactica. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that's um. Uh, who's on Battlestar Galactica? That's that guy from. Uh, yeah, Eddie James Al- Almos. Yeah, Almos. Yeah, not no. Almos. It's Almos. It's always been Almos. Uh, Almos. Stop it, Kinder. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's too fun, man. I yeah. have a blast when I talk to you. I always do. It's uh, it's good Thank times. You. Thanks for having me on, Jeff. Let, thanks for letting me pump the circuit. No, I'm, come on, man. It, I I believe in it. I wish I could do. I wish I wish I was Zuckerberg. I would have you funded, and then some. Yeah, Last well, question. hopefully one of these guys will come along and uh, realize because there is a real profit potential in this thing too. It's it's about oh, it's know, a cult classic, like, man. I could see it being played at every. I mean, think about it. It's kind of like you you are the Rocky Horror Picture Show for geeks. That's You're the. But I'm. He I'm, just said I just that, said like that the other day. Ago. Ago. Like, there you go. Can, musical. We can actually blow people's minds. Yeah. With this stuff. I mean, think this about how many people go to Comic Con. Yeah. I mean. This- it, Every Comic Con, everybody that goes to Comic Con will 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 buy this. Will watch they, it. And what what I don't think they also know is is how good it's going to be. We've got these fantastic scripts and fantastic directors attached, and the, the fans have written a couple of great scripts too. Uh, and they're all different freaking genres, and they're great stories. So yeah. we we're in need of an anthology series and then to center it around uh such a hip scene right now and then make that scene into a magical place like the twilight zone yeah. but uh, you know the circuit is where all this weirdness and cross-dimensional things happen um i don't know it'd be a lot of fun so we're, we're going for it uh, i'm gonna pump one more time and then i'm gonna go get some food i haven't eaten dinner yet man oh yeah yeah i gotta get some sleep but that's a different story actually i'm gonna go watch the hurry no it was funny because you know what? I can probably pull it off. I actually remastered the War of the Worlds from H.G. Wells. And I was going to play. I'm going to play that tonight after we're done here. So you might want to listen to the show. I'm going to leave it on. Yeah, I want to hear that. Yeah, at the Midnight Ocean. I actually took I took the the original recording that I had, and yeah, I figured, heck, I'm going to get thrown off YouTube any, or Facebook anyways. I might as well go for big. But yeah. uh, but I've got the original recording. So when we get done here. You go get some food and sit by, uh, sit by and listen to the War of the Worlds. But go ahead, plug it. Go. It's all you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, before I go, uh, everybody that's listening, um, check out the circuit at the circuit movie on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube or at the circuit film dot com and go to the circuit on Kickstarter in the next 24 days. The whole idea is 10 genres, uh, Actors from uh, around the, the we've got Robert Picardo, Tim Russ, Walter Koenig, Doug Jones, uh, Gigi Edgeley from Farscape, Rene Aubergenois, Robert Beltran, Ethan Phillips. Those are our Star Trek guys. Then we've got Olivia Diabo, Miltos Yaramello from Game of Thrones and from Star Wars, Terry Farrell, Mindy Robinson, uh, Robert Archer, Cody St. New. We've just got a ton of uh, talent. And then we're doing the ultimate fan collaborative project where you guys can submit your screenplays. And if you go and pledge on Kickstarter, you can submit at the circuitfilm.com to be a part of the production team. Come on, act, direct, write, work on the camera department, work in the set design, makeup, wardrobe, whatever your passion for filmmaking is. Uh, send us a, a letter or a video and, and tell us why you want to come on board. So for a $5 donation, you have a chance of joining an incredible movie, getting your, your, your name in the credits and, and your first credit on a big film. And if the fan base can get as excited as the circuit as we are about it, uh, we'll make this for a very long time and maybe we'll do a circuit film and then a circuit TV show. So I hope everybody's on board and, uh, thanks for listening guys. And, and thanks for pledging. Most importantly, we need people to pledge and we need people to share our videos around line. So 
share the circuit videos if you like them the kickstarter video and all the other videos that you can see on the website at the circuitfilm.com there you go enough said take care man. get yourself some uh some chinese right yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. How'd you know that? I, dude, huh? I, I know I am. You forget I'm connected. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you ever find your keys? Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, I did. That'll be, that'll, be, that'll be a story for the next time we meet, my friend. Yeah, some neighbor picked them up. So Yeah, uh, yeah sure. They, they were rifling through your stuff, man. Probably. They were while you were gone on your photo shoot. So, hey, take care. Go get some dinner. I appreciate it, Manu. And uh, and I didn't catch, well, if she wants to say her name. Oh, uh, yeah. That's my roommate, Val. Val. Valerie Marie Leslie. I'm one of the actors in the movie, too. I'm oh, little, okay. I'm redhead. I think I'm the only redhead. You're the you only know? redhead. Oh, see, here I am. I'm, I'm looking. Oh, I got you. I'm down in the fifth passenger. You're, yep. Sure. You're in the fifth passenger. Yep. I got yeah. you. I got you. I it's added right. your show on my fa- Facebook. Oh, so. thank you very much. That's, you're too okay. kind. You're too kind. Yeah. Well, he's going to play the uh, War of the Worlds uh, oh, original. The original? And yeah, I'm going to play. I've got, I actually remastered it. I grabbed the original one and I took out all of, as much as I could, uh, all of the scratchy and, and all that. Because the, believe it or not, the War of the Worlds, the only, the only original audio play they have was done on, ta- on uh, vinyl. Oh wow! They cut it to vinyl, so we were able to. I I was able to engineer as much. I have a sound, so I, yeah, I was able to get a lot of that stuff taken out. So we're going to be playing that here. We're going to take a quick break after we get after we hang up, Manu, and uh, but we're going to be playing the original War of the Worlds by uh, Orson Welles. Good stuff. All right. Stay tuned and listen, man. Thanks. Stay, all right, take care. Take care, Manu. I I will definitely be in touch, my friend. All right. See you. All right. Uh, so, so there you go, our good friend Manu Inarami. Now, Manu Inarami, I gotta, I gotta pronounce it. So, the look, guys, you won't see me pan, you know, pandering for money or anything like that. But I'm, I'm gonna tell you, this is a great. If you're in, you know, we're definitely alternative media, and we're in non-mainstream stuff, obviously for what we do. I will tell you, I will, I will tell you that if, if you like supporting real movies, real acting, real real stuff and not the crap that Hollywood is pumping down our throats all the time. Get out there and follow the circuit. Get behind it, do what you can do, tell your friends about it, you know, if we can get you know, 2 or 3,000 people just here in our audience with our listeners, the guys that are listening to the show, the guys that are going to download the shows and all of that here in the next couple of weeks. If each one of you would go out there and maybe pledge ten dollars, and make sure that when you put a pledge in there that you tell you know let let Manu know that it came from the Midnight Ocean, and your shirt size, and then he'll get that back to me, and I'll make sure that you get a Midnight Ocean limited edition T-shirt, and on top of that you get a uh, a, a coffee mug. So the least I can do. Uh, you know we got to support we got to support these independent film uh, film guys and everything. So. As I said earlier, we are going to take a very, a very quick break. And then when we get back, it'll be enough time. And what I'm going to do, and I'm going to play the original War of the Worlds audio from the radio in its entirety. No breaks, no nothing. So you guys can sit back, you can relax, and you can enjoy some good classic, classic radio. The way radio is meant to be. And maybe... I'm going to play music. So, but uh, we're, like I said, we're going to take about a, a five minute break and then we'll come back and then we will start the War of the Worlds here on the Midnight Ocean Radio Show and uh, podcast. And maybe I'm going to play music. So, but uh, we're, like I said, we're going to take about a, a five minute break and then we'll come back and then we will start the War of the Worlds.
is the Midnight Ocean with Jeff Norton on the Paranormal State Radio Network. That is right, Andrew. This is the Midnight Ocean radio show and a podcast. I'm your host, uh, Jeff Norton. You can join us here live every weeknight from 10 p.m. till 2 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or on the web at www.themidnightocean.com. If you guys are joining us for the very first time on YouTube, make sure you hit that ever most important subscribe button. If you are following us on Facebook, please, please share our videos. We appreciate that live on Facebook. You can type in The Midnight Ocean. That would help us out tremendously. And of course, you can follow us on Twitter. I promise I will not spam you. (laughs) I don't believe in spam. So we will only send you information that pertains to the show or to our guests. And that is it. But uh, man, what an outstanding, what, two and a half hours? (laughs) Three hours of show that we did with our good friend Manu Itarami. Uh, and and as we were talking about various topics, that's usually how it goes when we get together. It's one of those conversations that we just kind of blow through. And we can do that tonight because most of the radio stations are expecting uh, in, in the area are actually playing refeeds that we feed to here in Florida because of the storm, the pending storm. So we were able to do that tonight. I appreciate them allowing us to do that. Um as I said right before we went to the break, I had the opportunity. I've been searching the National Archives this week, actually, for all of our 911 tapes and our regression, alien abduction regressions and things. And one of the things I, I thought would be really cool was if we were able to remaster the original War of the Worlds audio clip. And that's exactly what we have done. And I tried to get it as clear as I possibly can. I'm sure some of you audio guys are like, oh, we could do better. But we we tried to get it as clear as we possibly can. And without further ado, I just want to say, um, you know, let's let's get this party going. Right? So here we go. So you're you're gonna listen, we're gonna play it in its entirety. If we go over our hour or so, then we go over our hour, no big deal. Not gonna lose any sleep over it. That's the things we can do. So here is the original War of the Worlds in its entirety, performed by the Mercury Radio Group and Orson Welles.
We have dispatched the special mobile unit to the station.
cars, uh, uh, gas tanks, tanks of the automobiles spreading everywhere, coming this way now, about 20 yards to my right. Ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control, we are unable to continue the broadcast from Grover's Mill. Evidently, there is some difficulty with our field transmission. However, we will return to that point at the earliest opportunity. In the meantime, we have a late bulletin from San Diego, California. Professor Indelkofer, speaking at a dinner of the California Astronomical Society, expressed the opinion that the explosions on Mars are on...
Ladies and gentlemen, I have a great...
Army bombing plane B-843 off Bayonne, New Jersey. Lieutenant Fogg, commanding eight bombers, reporting to Commander Fairfax Langham Field. This is Fogg reporting to Commander Fairfax Langham Field. Enemy tripod machines now in sight. Reinforced by three machines from the Marstown Cylinder. Six altogether. One machine partially crippled. Believed hit by shell from Army gun in Wachung Mountain. Guns now appear silent. A heavy black fog hanging close to the earth of extreme density, nature unknown. No sign of heat ray. Enemy now turns east, crossing Passaic River into the Jersey marshes. Another straddles the Pulaski Skyway. Evident objective is New York City. They're pushing down a high-tension power station. Machines are close together now, and we're ready to attack. Planes circling, ready to strike. A thousand yards, and we'll be over the first. Eight hundred yards. Six hundred. Four hundred. Two hundred. There they go. Giant arm raised. Green flash. Spraying us with flame. Two thousand feet. Engines are giving out. No chance to release bombs. Only one thing left. Drop on the plane and all. We're diving on the first one. Now the engine's gone. Eight. This is Bayonne, New Jersey, calling Langham Field. Bayonne, New Jersey, calling Langham Field. Come in, please. Langham Field, go ahead. Eight Army bombers in engagement with enemy tripod machines over Jersey Flats. Engines incapacitated by heat ray. All crash. One enemy machine destroyed. Enemy now discharging heavy black smoke in direction of... New York, New Jersey. New York, New Jersey. Warning. Poisonous black smoke pouring in from Jersey marshes. Street is South Street. That mass useless. Earth's population move into open spaces. Automobiles use Route 7, 23, 24. Avoid contested areas. Smoke now spreading over, over Raymond Boulevard. To X to L, calling C kill. To X to L, calling C kill. To X to L, calling 8X3R. Come in, please. To 8X3R, coming back at 2X2L. Eyes reception. Eyes reception. Hey, please. Where are you, 8X3R? What's the matter? Where are you? I'm speaking from the roof of broadcasting building. I'm speaking from the roof of broadcasting building, New York City. The bells you hear are ringing warn the people to evacuate the city as Martians approach. Estimated in the last two hours, three million people have moved out along the roads north. Hutchison River Parkway is still kept open for motor traffic. Boyd Bridges to Long Island, hopelessly jammed. All communication with Jersey Shore closed ten minutes ago. No more defenses. Our army is wiped out. Artillery, Air Force, everything wiped out. Maybe the last broadcast. We'll stay here to the end. People are holding service here below us in the cathedral. Now I look down the harbor, all, all manner of boats. Overloaded with fleeing population, pulling out from docks. Streets are all jammed. 
noise in crowds like New Year's Eve in city. Wait a minute, the... The enemy is now in sight above the palisades. Five... Five great machines. The first one is crossing the river. I can see it from here, waiting... Waiting the Hudson like a man, waiting through a brook. A bulletin is handed me. Martian cylinders are falling all over the country. One outside of Buffalo, one in Chicago, St. Louis. Seem to be time and space. Now the first machine reaches the shore. He stands watching, looking over the city. Steel cowlish head is even with the skyscrapers. He waits for the others. Rise like a line of new towers on the city's west side. Now they're lifting their metal hands. This is the end now. Smoke comes out, black smoke drifting over the city. People in the street see it now. They're running toward the East River, thousands of them. Dropping in like rats. Now the smoke's spreading faster. It's reached Times Square. People are trying to run away from it, but it's no use. They, they're falling like flies. Now the smoke's crossing 6th Avenue. 5th Avenue. A uh, hundred yards away. It's... <laughs> Fifty feet. listening to a CBS presentation of Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the Air in an original dramatization of The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells. The performance will continue after a brief intermission. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The War of the Worlds by H.G. Wells, starring Orson Welles and the Mercury Theater on the Air. I set down these notes on paper. I'm obsessed by the thought that I may be the last living man on earth. I've been hiding in this empty house near Grover's Mill, a small island of daylight cut off by the black smoke of the rest of the world. All that happened before the arrival of these monstrous creatures in the world now seems part of another life. Life that has no continuity with the present. Furtive existence, the lonely derelict who pencils these words on the back of some astronomical notes bearing the signature of Richard Pearson. Look down at my blackened hand. Try to connect them with a professor who lives at Princeton and who on the night of October 20th glimpsed through his telescope an orange splash of light on a distant planet. My wife. My colleagues, my students, my books, my observatory, my, my world. Where are they? Did they ever exist? Am I Richard Pearson? 
What day is it? Two days exist without calendars. Does time pass when there are no human hands left to wind the clocks? Writing down my daily life, I tell myself I shall preserve human history between the dark covers of this little book that was meant to record the movements of the stars. Right, I must live, and to live, I must eat. Find moldy bread in the kitchen, an orange not too spoiled to swallow. Keep watch at the window. Time to time, I catch sight of a Martian above the black smoke. Smoke still holds the house in its black coil, but thanks to this hissing sound, and suddenly I see a Martian mounted on his machine, spraying the air with a jet of steam as if to dissipate the smoke. I watch in a corner as his huge metal legs nearly brush against the house. Exhausted by terror, I fall asleep. Morning. Morning. Sun streams in the window. Black cloud of gas is lifted and the scorched meadows to the north look as though a black snowstorm had passed. I venture from the house. I make my way to a road. No traffic. Here in there, a wrecked car, baggage overturned, the blackened skeleton. Push on north. For some reason I feel safer trailing these monsters than running away from them. And I keep a careful watch. I've seen the Martians feed. Should one of their machines appear over the top of trees, I'm ready to fling myself flat on the earth. Come to a chestnut tree. Chestnuts are right. It's all my pockets. I just keep alive. Two days I wander in a vague northerly direction through a desolate world. Finally, I notice a living creature. A small red squirrel in a beech tree. I stare at him and wonder. He stares back at me. I believe at that moment the animal and I shared the same emotion. The joy of finding another living being. Push on north, I. Find dead cows in a brackish field and beyond the charred ruins of a dairy a silo. Ain't standing guard over the wasteland like a lighthouse. Deserted by the sea. Drive the silo, purchase a weathercock, the arrow. Points north. Oh. Next day I come to a city. City vaguely familiar in its contours, yet its buildings strangely dwarfed and leveled off as if a giant had sliced off its highest towers with a capricious sweep of his hand. Reached the outskirts on Newark. Newark, undemolished but humbled by some whim of the advancing Martians. Presently, with an odd feeling of being watched, I caught sight of something crouching in a doorway. I made a step towards it. Rose up and became a man. Man armed with a large knife. Stop. Stop. I come from many places. A long time ago, from Princeton. Princeton, huh? Near Gober's Mill. Yes. Gober's Mill. <laughs> There's no food here. This is my country. All this end of town down the river. There's only food for one. Which way are you going? I don't know. I guess I'm looking for people. And what was that? Did you hear something just then? No. Only a bird. A live bird. You get to know that birds have...
show and a podcast. I am your host, Jeff Norton. I hope you enjoyed our little show that we put together for you with our good friend, Manu Itarami, and uh, also Orson Welles' War of the Worlds. You can join us on the web at www.themidnightocean.com. If you're joining us on YouTube, make sure for the first time, if you push that little red button called subscribe, we'd appreciate it very much. You can also follow us on Facebook by typing in themidnightocean.com and, of course, on Twitter at themnocean.com. Like always, I want to say thank you. And uh, now I get to go watch the news <laughs> like the rest of you guys to see where we're at with the weather. But it looks like it looks like through prayer and, and everything that uh, we are moving the hurricane off the coast. I don't see it. It hasn't made landfall. I haven't heard anything about it yet making landfall. So that is very good news. But uh, we conclude tonight's broadcast with our very good friend. Ed Roman. Their various concerns. They were scrutinized and studied.
Radio Network. The heart and soul of rock and roll. With Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack. Wolfman Jack.